and you're watching Capital One Bowl Mania. Everything is better in the Bahamas as we kick off bowl season. Welcome to the hometown lenders Bahamas Bowl. The Red Hawks of Miami out of the MAC set to do battle with the Blazers of UAB out of Conference USA. First ever meeting between these two programs, the eighth edition of the Bahamas Bowl. And the first of 40 bowl games on ESPN as we kick things off. Great to have Joey Galloway here. I'm Steve Levy. You know, if you're not in the New Year's Six, the seventh bowl game, this is a pretty good place to yeah, be. Yeah, you've been here quite a few times, and I'm very disappointed. This is the first time you brought me with you. I'm excited to be here. You know, when you do the national championship game, they don't want you to wear these shirts, too. UAB is a program in transition. Today, they're in Conference USA. They're under their interim head coach, Brian Vincent. However, tomorrow, they'll start the move to the American Conference, and under their new head coach, our old pal from ESPN, Trent Dilfer, Chris Budden will have much more on that later. However, on the field, the Blazers came in with the top rusher in the nation in Dwayne McBride. He has opted out of the bowl game. Joe, he's going to opt into the NFL. It's unfortunate. We're in that time of year where some of the best players won't play in these bowl games unless they're in the playoffs. But if you're UAB, you have Jermaine Brown Jr. When you watch on film, this is a running back that rushed for over 800 40 yards. There's not much fall off, but the key for this rushing attack, that offensive line where all five starters got all conference accolades. Yeah. So no matter who's running the ball, the offensive line is outstanding. And, and Miami's got a great rushing defense, best in the MAC. We'll watch for that as well. So both schools had to win their regular season finales to become bowl eligible. Miami won three out of the last four to get here. They're playing their best ball of the season. Yeah, they are. And they're playing with a young quarterback. He's a redshirt freshman in Avion Smith. Now, this guy has developed as a passer, but he is a terrific app and a terrific runner. First guy in Miami history to lead a team in passing and rushing, but it was the final game against Ball State where he threw the ball for over 200 yards, had his best throwing game. So as the season's gone on, he's developed as a much better passer. But the key for UAB is to keep this young man in the pocket. Because when he gets outside the pocket, Steve, he is an outstanding athlete that can make plays. He is fun to watch. Exciting football on the way as we open up bowl season from the Bahamas. Of course it's 80 degrees and perfect. I mean, really, where else would you rather be? Back in Nassau, Thomas Robinson Stadium for the hometown lenders Bahamas Bowl. And just in the last couple of minutes or so, it's gotten warmer. We went from 80 to 83 degrees. And we say good morning to those of you watching in Oxford, Ohio, and Birmingham, Alabama, where it's just a, a bit chillier. Down to the field, here's Chris Budd. Thank you, Steve. This will be Brian Vincent's final game coaching UAB. He's been the interim since June when Bill Clark retired. He vocally wanted the job, and so did his players for him. They wrote a letter to the athletic director and the school president asking for Brian Vincent to get the head coaching job. But two weeks ago, it was announced his former Super Bowl champion, Brent, or Trent Dilfer, would be getting the head coaching job. Now, he they admit that it's been a little bit of awkwardness. Vincent moved out his desk 10 days early so that he could have the office, allow them to get everything going with recruiting. But Vincent said, this has also been tough. I put my heart and my soul into this program. So while it's been awkward, it's also been painful. See coaches, his guys for the last time. All right, Chris, thank you. I had a chance to talk with our old colleague, Trent Dilfer. He had nothing but incredible things to say about Brian Vincent. And this transition that, that could be awkward really hasn't been, at least between the interim head coach and the new incoming head coach. UAB won the toss and defers. So Miami will start with the football. Reese Burkhart handles the kickoffs for UAB. Matt Quinn is the place kicker for field goals and extra points. Football on a tee here in paradise. And we are underway, the eighth edition of the hometown lenders Bahamas Bowl. And we open with a touchback. See the Miami offense first and the dual threat quarterback that is Avion Smith. Brett Gabbert opened the season as the starting quarterback. He was injured in the opener, broken clavicle. 
And it was Avion Smith to the rescue, five and three as a starter this season. Ball spotted, sort of at the 25. Avion Smith is opening out of the gun. He has Kenny Tracy in the backfield. And on first down, off the fake, Smith throwing on the run and completing. Hits his tight end, Jack Coldiron, for first down yardage and a pickup of 14. That's how you open a game. I love the play call for Avion Smith. We talked about a quarterback that's completing less than 50% of his balls, and he's developing as a passer. Give him an easy completion to get him in rhythm. First down, football just shy of the 40-yard line. Tyree Shelton now checks into the backfield. He'll spread around the carries and hand it off to Shelton. He'll get out to the 45 and a pickup of five. The head coach of Miami is Chuck Martin. Chuck's in his ninth season as the head coach. Guided the Red Hawks to the 2019 MAC title. And he is the first coach in college football history to begin a season 0-6 and, and finish 6-6. and That was back in 2016. Kevin Davis now in the backfield. You see a lot of that, the wide receivers. Kind of like a running back. They fake it to him. Smith throws and nearly intercepted. Opportunity there. Grayson Cash, who is the real leader in that secondary for UAB, able to break it up. Yeah, and this ball was low. It's, it's a little off by Avion Smith. He has a guy in his face. They have to find ways to throw to the sideline, Steve. If I'm a young quarterback and it's early in the game, like the first completion going toward the sideline, that's where I want to work early till I get my confidence going, and then let's work the middle of the field. It's third down and five from their own 45. Shotgun snap, some late pressure coming. Able to complete to Kevin Davis. Has the first down. UAB brought the pressure. Smith able to unload, get it to Davis, the fastest player on their team. And he has first down yardage pickup of 15. And this is a guy developing. They bring pressure. He goes toward the blitzer to a running back out in the flat. If they're going to bring a blitz, get it to your running back. Let him make a play wide open. Great decision by the quarterback. First down and 10. And into UAB territory at the 45. Out of the shotgun snap, handoff to Keon Mosey. Mosey suffered an ankle injury. They weren't sure if he was going to be able to play this game, but he's in there. He's a full go. Devondrick Bynum made the stop for UAB, pick up a two. And it's great to see Mosey playing in this game because you mentioned the, the ankle, but it's going to be key for Miami to gain yards on first down. They need more than two or three yards. They got to stay ahead of the chains because of their passing situation, have an athletic quarterback again. No. UAB is going to send blitzes at them to confuse the young guy. So you have to be successful on first down to make your play calls easier. On second down and eight. Avion Smith. Off the play action in scramble mode. Now in some trouble. Somehow got out of that. And he's going to turn that into a game. What an athletic play by Avion Smith to pick up four. And here's the first sign in this game that Avion Smith is a terrific athlete. This should have been a sack. This should have been a loss. But he makes three or four guys miss in the backfield, doesn't see what he likes. Those are clean shots. You have to make these kind of plays. But you're dealing with a great athlete that could play running back in a lot of places. But because he's a quarterback, because he can throw, he's an athletic quarterback that you have to keep in the pocket. And Michael Fairbanks had an opportunity there. Third down and four. Cool. All right, buddy. Smith out of the gun. Watch the quarterback run. And he's not going to get there. Needed four. Picks up two on the rush. And an early decision, or, or maybe not, on fourth down. I don't think it's a decision. You go for this. I mean, you're in a bowl game. Uh, you've had a terrific season. You, you won a couple games to get here. I would let it hang. I would go for this. You're inside the 40 yard line. I don't know what the analytics say, Steve, but I would say go. Chuck Martin told us he hates analytics. Fourth down and three. A short three. Avion Smith to throw. Pocket is clean, and it's incomplete. Off the fingertips of Kevin Davis. Couldn't hang on. And it goes to an incompletion, and they turn it over on downs. 
and U of A just went man-to-man -man coverage on the back end. They feel like their defensive backs can stay with the receivers of Miami. Maybe a little early. You could have called pass interference, but these receivers have to get more separation to help out their young quarterback. Hippenhammer was the intended target there. The zero on his uniform. A couple of zeros in this game. Austin Ertl also wears a zero for Miami. All right, here's Dylan Hopkins now. Veteran quarterback. He'll make his 26th career start, 16-9 as a starter. And on first down and 10, they start from their own 32. Hopkins wants to throw, pocket is clean, deep shot, left sideline's got a man, and it's caught. And what a play on first down. Trey Shropshire on the gain of 46 and a strike from Hopkins. Love the thought process. Max protection, you have three guys out in the route, two receivers down the sideline, the back got out, they max protected the quarterback. Thinking run game with UAB early in the game, take your shot, you'll have man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. And all the way into Miami territory now. Here's Do Hopkins on the run, throwing and completing inside the 20. It's a pickup of three on the play. It's Dexter Boykin, fifth-year senior. And it's a red zone trip already for UAB. Get the defensive stop on a, on a fourth down, take your shot, and all of a sudden you flip the field in two plays and you're inside the 20-yard line. I would be surprised if this is another pass. I, I think this run game's gonna get started here pretty soon. Second down and six. Hand off, Jermaine Brown cuts it in, 10. And he's down to the nine-yard line. Got the first down. Ryan McWood made the stop. Pick up a nine on the play. And it'll be a first and goal situation just inside the 10. This offense line is so good. You rarely see these running backs have to make a cut in the backfield. And any successful run game starts with the running back's ability to get going. And because their offensive line is so good, they're usually breaking the line of scrimmage before they have to make a guy miss. A.J. Gates has checked in. He gets the carry. He stopped at the 10. No gain on forward progress. Good job by Matthew Salopek to make the stop for Miami. Salopek, a third team all Mac linebacker. He's going to be big because he's a guy that's going to have to come up and stop this run game. If Miami's going to have success stopping this UAB rush game, it's going to have to be the freedom of the linebackers to run around and make plays. Top scoring defense in the Mac. Really stout against the run game. Brown checks back in. Hopkins out of the shotgun. This is second and goal from the 10. One clap and it's in Hopkins' hands. Wants to throw for the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown. Quick strike offense. It's Shropshire who made the big catch to open the drive. And that's a quick start for this UAB offense on the board early. Man-to-man -man coverage outside. They want to stop the run. They're going to load the box. Eight guys in the box. Man-to-man. -man. The corner route from the slot is one of the hardest routes to cover. Great throw by Dylan Hopkins. Matt Quinn's on for the extra point. And he splits the uprights. How about that? Miami opens with a terrific drive that stalls out. They go for it on a fourth down, turn it over on downs, and UAB the other way. 68 yards, just over two minutes, five plays. 7 nothing in favor of UAB. The longest running international bowl game in college football history. Capital One Mania continues with the hometown lenders, Bahamas. You're a part of history here, bud. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm happy to be part of this weather. Yeah, the casino's happy you're here too, apparently, Joe. Uh, they're, they're, they will be happy by the time I leave, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> Gotta make some donations. Yeah, I'm not selfish at all. <laughs> so charitable. Seven nothing. UAB, very impressive first possession for the Blazers. 
Jalen Walker is back deep. See if he gets an opportunity to return this kick from Reese Burkhart. UAB came in as a double-digit favorite. And that kick nearly to the beach, which is only a couple of miles away from the stadium. Here's your Miami season recap. They had seven All-Mac Honors players. Really special on defense. And there you see, just allowing 22 and a half points per game. In the Mac, that'll win you some football games, especially strong against the run. Walk, that'll be a key here today. 14th bowl appearance for Miami. The Red Hawks have now secured bowl eligibility three straight seasons, as well as six of the last seven years. Avion Smith to fire, and it's off the hands. Mac Hippenhammer couldn't bring that one in. And that looked to be a really nice ball from Smith. It really was, and Hippenhammer is their, their best receiver, and he's getting used to this young quarterback. I know they've played the entire season, but he was expecting to have Brett Gabbert as his quarterback. He gets hurt early on, so it's difficult for a receiver to adjust in these situations and get as many balls as he expected, but that's a play he has to make. Chuck Martin made that point, too. You look at the numbers for the wide receivers, or well, the lack of production, what it looks like in terms of yardage. They get a young quarterback who does this probably better than he throws. That's Smith on the keeper for four. Stop made by Renard Ellis. We should point out that Kelly Sanders and Tyler Taylor for UAB are not playing. And they're two outstanding linebackers. And Noah Wilder is giving it a shot. He'll be number 50. We'll keep an eye on him and see how long he's able to stay in this game. It's third down and six. And Smith out of the shotgun. Wants to throw, set up the screen. It was batted up in the air and knocked down. Drew Tuazama able to get the hand to knock it down. And Tuazama is one of the players picking up the slack with the absence of Sanders. And UAB once again sends send the blick, a blitz on third down. They're trying to get to Avion Smith, make him uncomfortable. Nice job deflecting the pass. Dom Jobin is back to punt. Got some pressure immediately. And Starling Thomas makes the grab. It's a 40-yard punt, and UAB will take over at the 30. Second possession upcoming from the Blazers, already leading 7-0. The Hometown Lenders Bahamas Bowl is brought to you by Hometown Lenders. Is your mortgage working for you? And Atlanta's Paradise Island, paradise perfected. 7-0 in favor of UAB and along those lines. Take a look at our drive recap, which is brought to you by Easy Post. After a fourth down stop, UAB gets the ball back, immediately takes their shot. You know Miami's going to load up to try to play the run, take your shot downfield, man-to-man -man coverage, and then the run game out wide. We talked about this Miami defense. They're stout in the middle, and then it's man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Throw the corner. Perfect pass by Dylan Hopkins. Second possession for UAB. And again, just joining us, no Dwayne McBride. Going to make himself eligible for the NFL draft. So Jermaine Brown, Jr., Able to benefit, flag flies at the end of the play on the sideline. Michael Dowell, the hit on Brown. Let's see how late it was. On that UAB sideline. Referees, by the way, today, the officials from the Mountain West. Tim Davis is our referee. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 22, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. We got 22, Javon Kimpson on the flag. You got a team that runs the ball as well as UAB, and you got a defense that is the number one rush defense in the MAC. You're going to take extra shots at these running backs. That one's absolutely late, but you know you've been trying to be aggressive as a defense in your preparation for this game, so you see those kind of plays happen. It's a five-yard gain. They tack on the 15. 
play action. And it's to Terrell McDonald, the tight end for three, stumbling untouched. Been able to keep his feet, could have had a much bigger gain. McDonald had just six catches on the season, but a couple of touchdowns, and they go to him early. And I think earlier on, we're seeing the respect that this UAB offense has for the interior defensive line of Miami. Typically, they're between the tackles run game. We haven't seen them try to go between the tackles in this game because of that Miami defense. That front seven is really good. Already on the Miami side of the field, handoff is to Jermaine Brown, Jr. He'll have first down yardage. Let me ask you about this with Dwayne McBride. And listen, we were alerted to the fact McBride would not play sometime last night. You know, how about the game plan coming into this game offensively? From everything we heard, Bryant Vincent told McBride, you can tell me right up until game time. But I wonder how it impacted the preparations. I would imagine that they were planning for McBride to not play in this game. If you're going to err in a certain spot, it would be err in the area of him not playing, just because we've seen so much of this now yeah. in these bowl games. Unfortunately, this is the, the way it is now. Hopkins to throw, able to complete just inside the 35. That's Tajon Palmer. And here's Chris on the sideline, Andy Moore, after that game of seven. Yeah, I talked with McBride before the game. He told me that they came with a decision with Coach last night. He said it was really difficult. He, he didn't know how he was going to tell the team, but that they understood. He said, I was nearly in tears when I came to the final decision. The team understands it's for his future. But he said, I have one goal today. It's a cheer on my guy, Jermaine Brown. He needs 170 yards, become a 1,000 yard rush for the first time in UAB history. They would have two in a season. Good stuff, Chris. Thank you. McBride is the most decorated season in UAB football history. The keeper by Hopkins. Salopak makes the stop. Bring up a second down and three. Great story, Dwayne McBride. Can I mention I talked to Trent Dilfer last night? He, he think McBride not only plays on Sundays, Trent Dilfer has McBride as a Pro Bowl player in the NFL. Third down and one upcoming. Yeah, I think McBride is, is very talented. I'm going to stay off of the Pro Bowl thing. I think yep. a lot of things have to happen in a, in a player's favor, whether it's McBride or any running back. But I do think he is a very talented running back. They don't have success in the NFL. Third down and one just inside the 30. Jermaine Brown is in there. Give it to Brown straight ahead. And he's got first down yardage. And as for the decision for McBride making this decision, where, where do you stand on that, Joe? It's a... A popular topic that everybody's been discussing. Yeah, I hate, I hate to see players opt out. Uh, I don't think I would have opted out in, in that situation. I played in my bowl games. Uh, I, I played in, in a postseason bowl game. It, I just, I love the game of football, and I would hope that these kids love their university, love their teammates even more, and want to compete with those guys one last time. On first down, off the play fake, Hopkins wants the throw. Zips it across the middle, a little behind his intended target, Palmer. So let me put, let me ask you, let me put the question this way. Yep. How about if it's your kid? If it's my kid, uh, I would let him make the decision, but I would hope that he had developed relationships with his teammates, uh, a connection to his school, and a connection to loving the game of football, and would want to go out there and compete with his guys one last time. If he decided not to, I would support him either way, but I would hope that was his feeling going into one more chance to play with that helmet on. And really, by all accounts, everything we heard, McBride desperately wanted to play tonight, but people around him advised him otherwise, whether that's professional folks, family members, advisors, coaches, you get the idea. And so really difficult spot for Dwayne McBride. One yard gain on that last play for Jermaine Brown Jr. And it's gonna bring up a third down and nine. And this is a key play for the Miami defense here. They have to keep UAB out of the end zone. You can see their offense move the ball on the first drive, not very good on the second drive. They need a stop. Hopkins to throw on third and nine. He's in some trouble. Pocket collapses, and Miami gets there. Able to drop Hopkins at the 25-yard line. Ryan McWood in his seventh season. The veteran of that Miami defense. <laughs> Guy's 25 years old. And he makes the sack there. He's him. old enough to be up here in the booth with us. But he is, he is the veteran. He's the leader of this defense. And this is a great stop for the Miami defense. Man-to-man -man coverage on the back end. And that is a covered sack. There was nowhere to go for Hopkins with the football. So he had to tuck it and run it. And if you're Miami, you love to see Hopkins running the football because he is not a dual-threat quarterback. 
Here's Matt Quinn, who has not missed a kick since October. Oh, goodness. This from 42 on the way. And it is oh. good. There's no <laughs> announcer jinx in the Bahamas. You tried your best. Had it all the way. Never a doubt. 331 to play. First quarter from Nassau, UAB, 10-0 lead. Well, for the warm-up act, the emphasis on warm. Coming up after us, it's the Duluth Trading Cure Bowl. TSA and Troy in a top 25 showdown. That's 3 p.m. Eastern. Play for a lot of offense in that game. If, if, if you're a betting man, Steve, I would say take the over. And I don't Got even it. know what it is. Uh, lots of balls everywhere we go. We own it. 40 of 43 balls on the ESPN family and networks. We'll bring you 39 balls in 18 days. There's your Christmas present. Are you just working one? At Hanukkah, Bet. too. Yes, you, you know. know. Multiple? Oh, just one? The unofficial official voice. Bahamas Bowl. <laughs> in the hey, Matt Berry studio. Fowler has the Rose Bowl. I got the Bahamas yeah, Bowl. Hey, hey, if you got to pick one, <laughs> you know, this is this is the one to pick. Rose is nice. See, yeah, there you go. Good thing I never changed my Twitter bio. That's worked out nicely. You look thin in that picture. What that, are you trying to hey, say? Look, not that you don't look thin now. Oh, I see. I'm just saying, this picture, you look more athletic. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the tie. It's I don't know. tie. A lot of makeup. <laughs> hey, you got to wear the right attire depending upon the game. And the Bahamas dress differently. 10 0 UAB over Miami. This feels like an important drive for the Red Hawks. I didn't want to say it in the first quarter, Steve, but you are absolutely right. <laughs> they, they need to at least flip the field. Yeah. It's Keon Mosey on the rush there. Mosey had a big game, had a Career-high 171 rushing yards against Northwestern. Miami able to win at Northwestern on September 24th, 117-14. Second down and six now. And the chance of defense. Here's Smith as the pocket collapses. He'll get out of there and take a shot at the 32. Noah Wilder gets there, and Wilder is a story. He's sort of the guy on that UAB defense. First team all-conference. Tore his trap in the finale, and there is really just wanted to gut this one out. They wanted to give him at least the first series. Noah Wilder is all about the love of the game, and as the coaching staff told us, he is our leader, period. And again, we don't know how long he's going to last in the game, but he's in there right now on third and four. Look out, Avion Smith from the blind side is dropped in a big way. Nakia Eason able to get there for a loss of eight. Swarming UAB defense. Yeah, you, you talk about Noah Wilder. I mean, tearing a peck and then playing, when you talk about love of your teammates, love of the game, love of your university, that's what I'm speaking of in that situation. Here's a young man with a torn peck, which sounds absolutely terrible. I've never torn one. But for this kid to be out here playing in this game, and he's the spy. So his job is to keep Avion Smith in the pocket, and so far he's doing a really good job. And again, without Taylor and Sanders there, on a bounce, Starling Thomas. And the UAB offense will take over. 44-yard punt for Jobin. And we'll be back in 10 seconds after a message from Verbo. All right, I've heard some of you guys say VRBO. And let's just be honest, that's not it, OK? It's Verbo, Tebow. Verbo like Tebow, Tebow like Verbo. Ten nothing, it's all going right for UAB under their interim head coach, Bryant Vincent, who still calls the plays on the offense. They do have a first-year offense coordinator in Darren Hinshaw. And massive changes coming for UAB after this one. Off the play fake, Hopkins to throw, and he will complete. Hooks up again with Shropshire, is his go-to guy. Hopkins now eight of nine for 90 yards and a touchdown. And you can see Miami's loading up to stop the run, so he's going to get these man-to-man -man throws on the back end, and this was a great timing route 
breaking in underneath the, the coverage by Stropsire. But when you say Dylan Hopkins is 8 of 9, I don't know what you do to stop this offense because they run the ball for over 240 yards a game. And if Hopkins is going to be 8 of 9, where are you going to slow this offense down at? That's a great question. Hopkins, another deep throw. Well, that's one way to slow him down. Just grab him. Well overthrown. A flag is out. And we'll check the marker. Javon Kimpson had the coverage. That was interference yeah, or a touchdown. Hold it, 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 he was beat. Yeah. And so the, the defensive back just made a decision. I got to grab him to stop this touchdown. With 42 seconds left. The Prior to the pass, holding number 22, defense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. So that's a better flag because that stops a touchdown, right, as opposed to his earlier flag yeah. for the It's just making a foul. decision. I'm beat right now. I'll give up the five yards. I'll give up the first down instead of giving up a touchdown, which would make this game 17-0 and would feel as if it was out of reach for Miami's offense because they haven't been able to move the ball. Yeah. Now, is he still 8 of 9? That that just doesn't leave you. Is he still 8 of 9? How does that work in the Burrell's stats? still 8 of 9. Okay. Eric Merlis in the booth. All right. He's paying us to come down here and work this game. <laughs> Lee Witherspoon. <laughs> what a scam this is for he and spotter Barry Hockhauser. They've been here for 10 days, these two guys. How do you do that? And I haven't seen them one time until we showed up to the booth. They, they've really been enjoying themselves. Talk about a boondoggle. Both of these teams came down on Monday. They should have come down the Monday before. This is a good time here. Final seconds ticking away end of the first quarter. 10 nothing in favor of UAB and they've got the football at the Miami 40. And zeroes on the clock. Yeah, that official, comes that official like it's hot out here. Hey guys, let's just get to the, get the let's, get to, let's get to the break. You're not gonna argue with that, are you? No, not at all. One quarter complete from Nassau, Bahamas. Hometown Leathers, Bahamas Bowl. UAB out to a 10, nothing deep. Back in the Bahamas, the Hometown Leathers, Bahamas Bowl. 10 nothing, UAB leads Miami as we open up quarter number two. Bowl season rolls on tomorrow on ABC. The noon Eastern game. Jackson State and NC Central. Deion Sanders will coach his final game before leaving for Colorado. And then Washington State and Fresno State in the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, presented by Stiefel. And the nightcap, the New Mexico Bowl, SMU and BYU. All three games on ESPN Deportes, as well as the ESPN app. And on second down and eight to open the quarter, it's a pickup of one for Jermaine Brown Jr. Down on the sideline, Chris Budden. Yeah, the Miami players have a decal of a pirate ship flag on the back of their helmets in honor of Mike Leach, who Mississippi State head coach, who passed away earlier this week. I was talking with Chuck Martin before the game. He said, I didn't have a personal relationship, just knew him uh, just in passing from different coaching clinics. But he said, what I loved about him is he was one of the most genuine men you've ever met in the game. And those are so rare and so few nowadays. Coach is also wearing a patch of a pirate flag on his chest as well. Flag comes out on third down and seven. It's completed. We'll check the mark. I think he's short anyway. Pick up a six. That's McDonald, the tight end, his second grab. And we'll check the marker. Outside, number eight, defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, replay, third down. That's Brian Ugu. That's a significant flag. You know, just going back to what Chris was talking about with, with Miami, uh, there's no tie-in at all with Coach Leach. This is just a total respect move for everything Mike Leach was all about. That's really cool. Yeah, and it's interesting. In the week that he passed, the amount of people that have shown respect for Coach Leach, just to let you know what kind of guy he was, yeah. and for a school with no connection, right. to, to be wearing a patch, let you know how much he meant to the game of football. 
And when Chuck Martin tells you he didn't have any kind of real relationship with Coach Leach, that's a really impressive and a nice uh, gesture, nice nod uh, to one of the great characters in the sport, a terrific football coach, Mike Leach, and we'll all miss him. On third down and two, it's first down. UAB able to move the sticks. Did you have a great Mike Leach story at any point? Did you come across as much? No, not at all. I, I have no connection either, but I have a lot of people who were connected. Yeah. When you talk to them, uh, I haven't heard anybody say a bad word about yeah. Coach Leach, honestly. Listen, his press conferences were like must-see. It was so good, right? The Absolutely. production meetings were so good. You didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> but he was but entertaining. Great to watch. Yeah. And, and some people were afraid that personality took away from the fact he was such a good football coach. So you know, he had it all going on, and the man taken uh, far too soon, far too young. Our condolences to, to him and, and his family. Back down to Chris. Well, a lot of sideline reporters have stories because he didn't want to talk football per primarily during a halftime interview. So he would say, you better bring your running shoes. The only way I'm talking to you is if you keep up. So I was covering him one time during the Apple Cup, and I'm trying to keep up. And I feel my foot hit the pylon. And I think, I'm going down, I'm going down. I fell flat on my face. And he looked at me and he goes, I told you you had to keep up. You hit the pylon. Did you score, though? You had the football? I was wondering, was she inside, was she inbounds when she, when she tripped? Hey, Chris is in the end zone. Second down and seven. Play action. Hopkins in some trouble. Able to just get rid of it. Ugo, who was offside, creates the pressure there. And it's going to bring up a third down and seven. And he's second on the team in sacks. And it's going to be important for Miami to somehow make uh, Hopkins feel uncomfortable. And you're inside the red zone. Take your shots. The officials are huddling. Maybe intentional grounding are they talking about? Let's see. There was no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the pocket. The ball went beyond the line of scrimmage. Third so there down. you go. Uh, total yards so far, UAB 123. And Miami just 47. I think the majority of those yards are on that first drive where they stalled out on a fourth down. Yeah, they've been able to move the ball. And the key is getting across the 50-yard line. And that way you, you just flip the field in your favor. And they've been able to get to the red zone. We'll see if they can answer this one with more points. But Miami's going to have to find a way. And I expect more blitz package coming at this quarterback. Miami defense needs to get off the field on third down and seven. Hopkins on the run. And he's just throwing that away. And it's fourth down. Wanted Bryce Damus on the incompletion, fourth down. Matt Quinn's already hit from 42. This is a fourth down and seven. I think they're keeping Hopkins in. Ball is spotted at the 28. There's some wind. The 42-yard field goal is kicked in the other direction. And they'll keep the offense on the field. Hopkins, under some pressure, airs it out, looking for the end zone, and just too far. Schropschreier was there and just couldn't reach out and grab it for another touchdown. And great coverage on the back end, uh, and it's man-to-man -man coverage, and they get the stop they needed. Shropshire's good coverage there, too, and a near miss for UAB. Miami football when we come back. Welcome back to the hometown lenders Bahamas Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. UAB enjoying a 10-0 lead here in the second quarter. Tis the season for bowl games. Four more for you tomorrow on ESPN and the app starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. Wasabi from Fenway Park. Cincinnati and Louisville will go at it. That should be interesting for a variety of reasons. And Florida, Oregon State, followed by Rice and Southern Miss. North Texas and Boise State will round things out. Tyree Shelton is the ball carrier. He might be the most talented of the running backs, but again, they really split the carries. A couple of springs ago, Shelton tore his ACL, so he didn't play much last season. And the coaching staff thinking he's finally back. He's back full go 
100%. And Miami has to find a way to get some big plays in this offense. I don't know that they can take the entire field going four or five yards at a pop. They have to find a way to get some chunk yardage to at least get back to the red zone like they did on the first drive. Avion Smith, the ball carrier, stays on his feet at a nice first down run. He took a big shot that bounced him back. And in the end, it's a pickup of 11. But just getting a first down is significant. Miami's first drive, then eight plays, and turned it over on downs. The last two drives, three and out. At least they keep their own defense off the field, give them a brief. Yeah, we've seen UAB send a number of blitzes at Avion Smith to make him uncomfortable. Miami's going to have to take advantage on the outside when they get their man-to-man -man coverage. We talked about this young man developing as a passer. They're going to need him to be a playmaker throwing the ball. First down and 10. Smith wants to throw. Directing traffic, lofts it down the sideline, has a man, and it's just too far. Had the opportunity from Miles Marshall and just overshot him a bit. Marshall is the player who made the 34-yard touchdown catch with a minute 42 left to get the win at Ball State to give Miami to the Bahamas. Good job by Marshall staying alive. He knows that Avion Smith may not be on time. They know he's a playmaker. He can stay alive. Marshall stayed alive, went downfield, just the ball just a little bit out of his reach. Smith has missed four in a row. He's 2 of 7, 30 yards passing to this point. Second down and 10. And he fakes it to Shelton, and Smith will keep it. Get the 45, pick up a two. Bring up a third down, long. And these are difficult play calls. If you're dealing with a young quarterback that is developing as a passer, as an offensive coordinator, you're trying to make a, a play call on third and eight in a game where you know you must keep your defense on the sideline. Just let him get a break, because we're going against a, an offense in UAB that is a grinded out offense that can wear you down. Offensively, it's your job to get a couple first downs and let that defense rest. Eric Kaler is the offensive coordinator in his ninth year running the offense for the Red Hawks. Third down and eight. Smith to throw and has first down yardage. Clutch throw and catch. Mac Hippenhammer pick up a 10. On the previous few third downs, UAB sent a blitz at Avion Smith to make him uncomfortable. This time, they just rushed three. Avion Smith, feet planted, has a chance to look over the defense and delivers a strike. That is key for his confidence, but key for getting a first down and letting your defense rest. Second team all, Mac. Mac Hippenhammer on first down and 10. A little bit of an issue with the snap, it looked like, off the play action. Now Avion Smith in all sorts of trouble, and he's dropped back at the 42-yard line. Big problems there. Jalen Key coming from the safety position. And you wonder if defense coordinator David Reeves is thinking, I didn't blitz on the last third down, which I should have. Let Avion Smith get comfortable. So let me send a blitz on this first down. Let me get back at him, get back to what we want to do, be aggressive on the defensive front, and make this quarterback scramble and try to make plays. He could have gotten flagged for taunting there at the end of that play. Ah, Steve, we, they, it's, it's, seven, we're in the Bahamas. Eight, it's this. a bowl game. Got it. No taunting. Taunting is legal. My bad. Second and 17. Here's Kevin Davis. And he'll get back across midfield, pick up about six. That sack's a crusher. Yeah, and, and on the last third down, UAB sat back. They rushed three. I'd be very surprised if they do that again. This is a third and long, a different, a difficult play call for Miami. If I'm UAB, I'm sending another blitz because they've been greatly successful at making Avion Smith move out of the pocket and sometimes get to him for a sack. David Reeves is the defensive coordinator for UAB. Seventh year on the staff, sixth year running the defense. Third down and 11. See if Avion Smith has another big play in him. UAB showing pressure. Here they come. Smith in trouble, and he's not going to get out of it. Back at the 45, it is Noah Wilder coming. Third sack of the day already for UAB, and it's fourth and forever. And Miami has had zero answer for the blitz of UAB. That's why I was so surprised they sat back on the last third down, but they hadn't did it the, the, the two third downs after that. And again, Noah Wilder, how impressed are you with this young man playing in this game with the injury, and he's been the key for this defense so far. Starling Thomas is back deep. See if he can set UAB up. And Dom Jobin is set the punt for the third time already. 
Jobin standing at his 35. Gets it away, got a little bit of pressure. High spiraling kick. And it will bounce into the end zone. 51 yard punt. Nets out at just 31. 10 nothing UAB when we come back. The Hometown Lenders Bahamas Bowl is brought to you by Tax Act. File for less and get more. Chuck Martin, the head coach of Miami, said his philosophy 48 hours before the bowl game is hate to his kids. Have the time of your life. No meetings till Wednesday. You do something wrong, I'm sending you home myself. Looks like those kids were having a blast. Nobody did anything wrong there. It's amazing to me the, the blessings that this game of football provides for people. When you talk about swimming with dolphins, I mean, when do you get a chance to do things like that? And the game of football has provided that for so many people. You see Ryan McWood. He'll be opposing a different quarterback. Jacob Zeno is in the game. Replacing Dylan Hopkins. We'll see what's going on with that. First down and 10, and flags fly. Ball start, number 61, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's a penalty on Matthew Treherne. In his 35th game, he started all of them the fifth year senior. And he's protecting now Jacob Zeno. You said you noticed something maybe with Hopkins earlier. Yeah, I thought he was limping on the last drive. It, it didn't look like he was injured or, or was going to come out of the game, but he was limping you know, in between plays. So that may be part of this. And this just may be a plan in a bowl game to yeah. get your other quarterback in the game at some point. Chris? Yeah, watching Hopkins on the sideline, he hasn't received any medical treatment. He has not received any taping, and he has his helmet on currently. Oh, Zeno is hit. The ball comes out. Back of the nine yard line. Nolan Johnson coming. And it's a loss of six on the play. And UAB lucky to hang on to that football. That's exactly the kind of break Miami needed. Yeah, in two plays we've seen a false start. And now we see a sack of Zeno in the backfield. If you're Miami, new quarterback coming to the game, get after him. Blitz him, make him uncomfortable. We've seen Hopkins very comfortable in this game. He's out now, so we'll see if this Miami defense can now start making some plays. We know they're an outstanding defense. They have to find a way to keep their offense in this game as they're struggling. Good job for Nolan Johnson. Pick up a two, Jermaine Brown Jr. And it's going to bring up a third down and long. See the numbers on Dylan Hopkins. And those misses have been near misses. Really close on another touchdown pass to Shropshire. But they think highly of Jacob Zeno, that's for sure. Redshirt junior out of San Antonio, transfer from Baylor. What's well, third 19, Steve? So we're going to see how high they think of him. <laughs> if, if this is, yeah, I don't know how many plays you got for third 19, yeah. but if they let this kid throw a pass on third 19, right. they think very highly of him. What do you got, draw? A uh, draw, screen. screen. That's usually what you see. So conservative, Joey. Come on. I say take a shot. Bahamas ball. And they're with let's me. Go. Zeno lets it fly, and he's got a man. It's Shropshire all by himself. Down to the 40 yard line. Jacob Zeno laughs at third and 19. It's a pickup of 48. Maybe the play of the game. And I don't even know what's going to happen beyond this. But this may still be the play of the game. A third 19, you're Miami. You're struggling to get your offense going. You have a chance to get the ball back in short field position. And now all of a sudden, because of a great play by Zeno, a great play call, now they're across the 50. If you're Miami, you're, you're shaking your head. And you're like, that was our chance to get back in this game. Shropshire now has four catches for 120 yards and a touchdown. And another one for Zeno airing it out. Nothing doing there. Hey, just to go back to that last play, the protection was great. Offensive line did a great job. And then how did how did Shropshire get so open? In watching this offensive line team. play, and you mentioned they they're fun to watch on film. And I truly believe that the defensive backs from Miami are thinking it's third 19. Right. They're thinking like we were thinking. This is going to be a screen. This is going to be a draw. It's a new quarterback in the game. No way they're going to let this kid throw deep on third 19. But they did. The Shropshire, Time we'll see his yards, the and then the all of Miami's offense. Shropshire's doubling him up by himself. 
it has been this UAB defense that, that has been outstanding and slowing down this Miami offense. They're, they're rushing the quarterback. Uh, they're blitzing on third downs or getting the ball back for the UAB offense. And I think because coming into this game, you know that the Miami offense is the best rush defense in the MAC. If you're UAB, you're thinking, let's throw. Let, let's see if they can cover on the back end. Second down and 10 at the 41 of Miami. Off the play action. Zeno throwing on the run. Wanted Brody Dalton there. And bring up a third down and 10. It looked like Dalton just jumped a little too early. He's on his way down as the ball got to him. But not another nice play by Zeno, who has come into this game. And, and for a rough start, a false start, sack on the next play, he is now settled in and looks pretty good. Zeno played in eight games during the regular season, threw for 332 yards in the game against UTSA. And here he's facing a third down and 10. From the 41. Pocket's good for now, and now it collapses. Zeno had the time to throw it, and then things broke down. And the Miami defense able to stand. Caden Woolard got there on the sack, loss of six on the play. Huge play for Miami. They need this game, they need this stop to stay in this game. One more score by UAB uh, this late in the second quarter would really be a difficult situation for Miami because their offense has struggled. Now they'll get this ball back. Now, long field to go, but at least they get the ball back with a chance to get some points before the half. Kyle Greenwell is back to punt. For Greenwell, this is his 63rd game that ties a UAB school record with Hayden Pittman, who said it last year. Jalen Walker, no fair catch from the 10. He'll cut it up the middle, out beyond the 30, and got the 36. There was an injured UAB player down, maybe before Walker even caught the ball, and he's still down on the field. 37-yard punt, 25 on the injury, and that's Terrell McDonald. The injured tight end on special teams down for UAB. We'll be right back. Ten nothing. UAB on top as Terrell McDonald walks off to his own power. That's good to see. Some more games to watch. Capital One Bowl Mania update. The Wasabi Fenway Bowl is interesting. Scott Satterfield will not attend the game because he was at Louisville and took the Cincinnati job. They're going head-to-head. -head. And then the New Mexico Bowl, SMU and BYU, tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Out of the gun. Avion Smith in scramble mode, running to his left, gets the 40, and he'll step out of bounds. Pick up of six on the play. Again, if you're just joining us, the UAB coaching story is just, it's out there. Uh, Brian Vincent, the interim head coach, he was promoted to interim head coach on June 27th following Bill Clark's resignation due to some back issues. Clark is get, gets credit for saving the program. Remember, they didn't play football in 2015 and 2016. Back to Avion Smith on the ground. Pick up a couple more. And so Brian Vinson was promoted after being the offensive coordinator. And, and then he sees, you know, it's announced that Trent Dilfer is going to come in and take over. And, you know, Vinson said he's done everything he can to make it a smooth transition. Vinson said he vacated his office 10 days early to allow Dilfer to come in and make that transition. And talking to Coach Vincent, talking to Coach Dilfer, both of them said they are, they are together on this. They have bonded over these last couple of weeks. There's nothing awkward between them. Might be a different story with the administration. It's Kevin Davis, the ball carrier. But the, these, these transitions are never easy. And this appears to be difficult as well. And there is Trent Dilfer. Trent said he, he was really staying away. Like, he's here, he's on the sideline, but he's just an interested observer at this point. And I don't know that there was a more difficult coach's conversation than we had with Coach Vincent. 
uh, more emotional than I've ever seen a coach in a coach's conversation. This is difficult for him. This is difficult for his players, uh, difficult for everybody involved. And so when you have this kind of situation, this coach is on his way out. And he's coaching in his last game. And the, and the next coach is on the sideline. I mean, when he's talking to us, you could just feel his emotion. And I give him credit for the way he's handled. You're talking about cleaning out your office 10 days early. I don't know of many guys that would do that in this type of situation when you want to be here and you don't get that opportunity. I got the quote, pal. Coach Vincent said, I've dedicated my life, my soul, my family's life to this program. And he fully thought he was coming back. He fully thought he'd be back. He said he thought he had done enough. And the school's administration thought otherwise. And went with Trent Dilfer. And there was a very public letter that the players wrote to their president. This is just a piece of that we believe in Coach Vincent. Want him to be our head coach. This team loves Coach Vincent, believes in him. He is our head coach, a great leader, and we follow him. And Brian Vincent said he, the letter brought tears to his heart. It's usually tears to your eyes, but, but that was very powerful. Tears to your heart means something, too whether he meant to say it that way or not. On fourth down and one, Avion Smith, the quarterback keeper, and forward progress will give him the first down. And so Miami will keep possession of the ball with a minute 59 left. And I think that's the part we all, we all miss when we start talking about these coaches' hires, these coaches' situations. And this is a huge first down for this Miami offense. But speaking about Coach Vincent, when we talk about firing coaches and the way these things are released, we don't take into account these people have families. Right. These kids are hanging in the balance of who's their next head coach. We move on like it's a simple transaction, and a lot of times it's not. And Vincent went out of his way to tell the players in this program, this is not Dilfer's fault. This is not about the new head coach. And Brian Vincent will coach someplace in the future. So will David Reeves, and probably the majority of this coaching staff. I know Trent Dilfer still has decisions to make as to what his future coaching staff will, will look like, but not easy, awkward, emotional, trying to make it as smooth as possible. Hip and hammer, couldn't haul in that one for maybe on Smith, but, but that's kind of been the season for UAB. As Vincent said, a season of uncertainty and the unknown, but their leadership and character has been tested. And he said, steady in the storm, right? That's the quote from Vincent, steady in the storm. And hey, it, it's been a storm. They're going to a different conference. The kids found out on social media. I mean, that, yeah, communication was not ideal in, in this whole thing. No, and, and, and I don't th I don't know how it can be anymore because of social media. Right. I, I don't know that it, it's ever going to be ideal again. But again, there are people and their families that are hanging in the balance, and they're finding out on social media. That's just it's it's not right for kids that are 18, 19, 20 years old. Check that flag on third down and six. Miami has used their first timeout of the half. Media timeout. Timeout instead of the flag. Hard to find the play clocks here in the Bahamas. <laughs> Here's one down to the left. I'm Matt Barry. Coming up on the college football final halftime report, we'll have thoughts on the first half of this game. Plus, we remember Mike Leach and Bowl Mania is underway. We'll get you set for all the games. For now, let's go back to Steve Levy, who's borrowing my booth. We're also going to give dollars out to Joey Galloway for everything he said in the first half. Uh, back to vacation, fellas. All right, Matt, thanks. Shame to hear about your uh, passport problems, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Darn shame you couldn't make it this year to the ball. Third down and seven, ninth play of the drive. And it's the longest drive for Miami with a minute 11 left in the half. And on third and seven, Avion Smith will take off. And I think he's going to come up a yard short, pick up a five on the play. That's fourth down and no decision here. Yeah, plenty of time on the clock. There, it's, it's ticking down about 55 right now. So if you're Miami, you want to be in a hurry. But at the same time, you have plenty of time. You don't have to rush. Well, now the clock is stopped. Timeout, Miami. I'd like they left some time off the clock before they called that timeout. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of indec indecision because they weren't sure where the ball was spotted. Yeah. And so when you're in that situation, you don't know if you got third and one, if you got, you know, maybe third and inches or fourth and inches, I'm sorry, uh, or you get the first down, this is the most important play call of your game so far. You want to get this one right. Would be about a 53-yard field goal. We were told that Graham Nicholson 
during the season of warm-ups can hit from 60 or so and be going in uh, be going with the wind at his back so that would help him there too but a fourth and one trailing 10 nothing they're going to try to keep this drive moving just one timeout left 49 seconds remaining Avion Smith empties the backfield. Now gets some motion with Kenny Tracy. Motions him into the backfield. And Avion Smith was going to want it. Rather predictable. And first down progress. And forward motion will give him the, the progress on the first down. There wasn't a doubt in anybody's mind what that play was going to be. We knew that was going to be a quarterback Should run. UAB have known it too? At UAB, I think they did know it. But then they tried. Got it. Sometimes the other team is, is more physical in certain situations. They're on scholarship too, right? Absolutely. Okay. Now Smith wants to throw on first down. Lofts one for the end zone. Got a man, it is caught. Touchdown. Mac Hippenhammer loses his helmet, but not the football. A 33-yard strike from Avion Smith, and Miami's very much in this football game. And just like that, it's a three-point game after they kick the extra point. Miami's offense looked absolutely terrible up until that point. You get one drive, you put something together, now it's 10-7. If you get a hold, you go into the locker room with the momentum. Graham Nicholson on the season has been perfect. 24 of 24 on extra points. Snap of the place, and no good. That looked like it was blocked. Definite contact, and it didn't get over the crossbar. Makes it a 10-6 game. Did I mention that Graham Nicholson was 24 for 24 on extra points? You did mention that. Yeah. I think you said it was going to be 10-7, so. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah. But either way, we see Avion Smith. Look, if you're a quarterback and your offense is struggling, the easiest throw to make without any decision-making yeah. is the man-to-man -man coverage deep ball. Throw it out there, see if your guy can make a play for you. In this case, Hippenhammer made a great play. He's their leading receiver, and he made the play they needed. Hippenhammer's a great story. He's a terrific baseball player. He was actually on Penn State's baseball team. They played against Miami. That was the final sporting event maybe in the country prior to the pandemic, shutting everything down. And then he comes over, the transfer to Miami, played on Miami's baseball team as well. Now he's put Miami, the baseball team, in the rear view and focusing full-time on football, and he's quite a talent. The longest play of the day before that was 15 yards of two different receivers for Miami, but they get the big strike and really an impressive throw for Avion Smith. And there's 34 seconds left in this first half. Think about Smith before that drive was three of eight for 40 yards. The offense couldn't move the ball. They had rushed the ball for 28 yards. And you put one drive together at the end of a half, and now it's 10 6. You're within four points. You get a chance to go into your locker room feeling pretty good about where you are in a half where you didn't play very well offensively. And it's significant to get that touchdown there, but especially because UAB is going to get the ball coming out of the locker room to start the third quarter. Let's see how the Blazers play this. Come out running with Jermaine Brown Jr. Caden Woolard the stop. Timeout taken with 27 seconds left. Down to Chris Budden. Coach Vinjan just huddled up his team and he said, guys, we have 34 seconds left. We got plenty of time, so let's get this party started. All right. Party in the Bahamas. Perfect. Good time. What, what time's your party start today, Steve? Start of the third quarter. Man, I'm all business. You know me, Joe. I'm all business. That's what I've heard. I'm all business till it's time for fun. Absolutely. And then there are fun facts. Did you know there are over 700 islands in the Bahamas? I did not know that. Third largest reef on Earth. They got a marching band on their currency. You know, in Canada, it's a hockey player. 
home of the world's third largest wine cellar. Can't believe you haven't been there yet. No, I missed that too. Maybe that's later. That's going to go as an incomplete pass. Tried to get it to Palmer. This is actually an interesting play call. Now, it is third down and six. So if you don't get a first down here, right. you're going to have to punt this football. And if I'm Miami, I'm going for a block. Why not? The UAB has two timeouts left. Be interesting if they run the ball here. Miami will spend their last timeout. They're going to throw it. And that is completed. They go right back to Tajon Palmer. He has the first down yardage. Pick up a six. First down. Well, you give up a hitch, that's going to take away all the drama we were trying to set up, Steve. Third and six, you give up a seven-yard hitch. Right. Yeah. And now we'll see how they play out the half with 17 seconds left. They'll shut a play down. The flag comes in. False start, number 62. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. That's Sidney Wells, who's playing in his 40th career game. He's started all of them, first team all conference. This is a terrific offensive line for UAB. Been a relatively clean game as well. It really has. And, and when you have running football teams, you talk about this offensive line of UAB, they don't commit a lot of penalties. So you expect the UAB to play a clean one, but Miami, Miami's also done the same thing. First and 15 into heavy coverage wanted Fred Farrier. So he went up and tried to grab it and off his fingertips. There's a flag down back in the backfield. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number eight, defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. That's Brian Ugu. So now things get a little more interesting. They tack on the 15. And Ugu trying to deflect the pass, just jumped in the air and came down on the quarterback. Those are tough situations for a defensive end. You're trying to deflect the pass, but then when you're in the air, you have to also try to avoid hitting the quarterback in the head. Again, Jacob Zeno played the last series. Hopkins back in there on first down and 10, comes out throwing and looked like he had two receivers in the area and didn't hit either one of them. Nine seconds left. Yeah, this, this last 30 seconds, Steve, has taken as long as the entire second quarter. I mean, this is, this is an interesting drive. Nine seconds now, you probably get two more plays if you're UAB. Right. Uh, you might be able to get in the field goal range, try a long field goal, but this one would be into the wind. So I'd imagine they have to get a pretty good chunk of yards before they could try this field goal. Ball spotted at their own 46. Nine seconds left, two timeouts remaining. And they're going to key on the ground with Brown, and he will hop out over a defender and out of bounds. Clock stopped with three seconds left. And it's a pick up a 16. What's this, about a 55-yard field goal from Spot him. Ball spotted at the 39. 57-ish on the field goal attempt. If you want to take a long shot. Into the wind. Into the wind. Well, the flags aren't blowing much now. Now, well, the pro game will take over on Sunday. Sunday NFL Countdown Crew is coming for week 15 at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. And the Monday Night Countdown Crew getting you ready for the Monday Night matchup. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers hosting Baker Mayfield and the Rams. It just sounds weird. It just sounds Lambeau so Field different. will be slightly chillier than the temperatures here at the hometown lenders Bahamas Bowl. But it'll be a great game. Virtual must-win playoff scenario there. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. And the Manning cast also available. Peyton and Eli on ESPN2. It's about a 56-yard field goal attempt. They're not going to do that. They're going to take one shot. Maybe a Hail Mary would throw it for the end zone. Let's see. Hopkins lets it go. He's going to be well short, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Miami. A lane down the sideline and getting back to midfield. And that could have been much more dangerous for UAB throwing the pick. The interception. Zolman looks like he comes up with it for Miami. Rowan Zolman, the freshman, a true freshman, the only true freshman on Miami who gets significant playing time, makes the interception. But the officials are talking. 
And let's see. After the play, personal foul number 61, UAB. That 15 yards will be added on in the second half, halftime. That's going to carry over into the second half. Why did he not get it now and try to take a yard penalty? Right. Now, is UAB considered on defense after the interception, right? Yeah. I, and the clock. No. Half can't end on a defensive penalty. All right, we'll get to the bottom of this, but first, let's go down to Chris Budden. Coach, you guys marched right down the field on that first possession. What have you seen out of your offense since? You know, I, I just think we've had a couple false starts that have really hurt drives on the first play and backed us up at first and 15, first and 15. We gave up a couple pressures that, that we can't do, but we'd be, able to make, we'd be able to move the ball at times, but we've got to finish drives. Just like we did those first two, we got to finish drives. We're playing hard, we just got to minimize our mistakes. Defensively, you contained the Red Hawks until that last series. What do you need more out of in the second half? We've got to get off the field on third downs. We've given up probably three third and mediums to third and longs. We've got to get off the field on third downs. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. You wonder what is swirling around in the mind of interim head coach Brian Vincent, who has one more half to be the head coach at UAB. 10-6 at the break. Set for Matt Barry in the College Football Halftime Report. Steve Levy, thank you. Trevor Maddich, Sam Macho, Matt. One Bowl Mania update. Seven bowl games on our air tomorrow. Trev, give the people something to watch. Las Vegas Bowl. Florida has a ton of guys opting out, including their quarterback, their best offensive lineman. Oregon State intact, fired up to get their 10th win. Jimmy Kimmel, L.A. Bowl, Washington State. They lost both their coordinators, but you got Cam Ward playing that game. Defensively, Ron Stone Jr. is an outstanding player. I like Washington State in this one, but it'll be interesting to see what their offense and defense looks like. Scott Satterfield, Bowl, early 11 a.m. Eastern ESPN, Cincinnati, Louisville. Plus the final time we see Deion Sanders at Jackson State in the Celebration Bowl. Got a whole second half of hip and hammer. Right now, 10-6, UAB back to the Bahamas. Steve Levy, Joey Galloway after this. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. Welcome to the Hometown Lenders Bahamas Bowl. Nassau getting ready to start the second half. Some of the halftime festivities. Thomas Robinson Stadium on a, as usual, spectacular day. 10-6 UAB leads Miami. We take a look at today's clutch delivery. Brought to you by Chipotle. Yeah, we thought we were going to see a running offense out of uh, UAB averaging over 240 yards a game, but it's been the pass game. And throwing the ball to Trey Shropshire, four catches, 120 yards. He's been open. It's been man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. This is an outstanding Miami defense against the run. And so UAB has changed their game plan. They've decided to throw the ball, and they've done it very well. You know, Miami opened with a great drive. They turned it over on downs. Then UAB looked like at some point they were going to run away with this thing up 10-0. And then a late strike for Miami gets them a touchdown. They missed the extra point. And that's how we got the 10-6. Yeah, Miami, had, Miami had four drives for 68 yards. And then on the last drive, 11 plays, 65 yards. And they get a touchdown to make this a game. Chris Budden working the warm sidelines. Yeah, I can always rely on Miami head coach Chuck Martin for some brutal honesty. He said, we were absolutely horrendous for most of that first half. He goes, but I'm pretty happy because as bad as we played, we should be down more than four right now. He liked the way that they were move, moved the ball towards the end of that first half. He said, honestly, right now, I think the tactic is to continue with the run game. UAB looks tired, and we want to capitalize on that. Thank you, Chris. The ball is going to be kicked off from the 50 just to clean up some what happened at the end of the half and we've gotten a lot of help on this at halftime there was a dead ball foul and because it's a dead ball foul it cannot extend a quarter because the half is already over at that point so the yardage the penalty yardage the 15 yards carries over to the second half kickoff and so that's why Miami is kicking from the 50. That's a terrible rule. Still goes for the touchback. <laughs> Listen, you and I have seen a lot of football on a lot of levels. We've never seen penalty yardage carry over. I checked with John Parry. 
He said in his 25 years in the NFL, he might have seen that two times in 25 years. Penalty yardage carrying over. It's an awful Second. rule. <laughs> so, so there's really no penalty. They kicked it out of the end zone, which they do anyhow. If they put that in the first half, Miami has a chance at a, what, a 40-something yard field goal? A 51 goal, or 52. A 51-yard field yeah. goal. And the, and the penalty matters at that point. Doing it like this, the penalty doesn't matter at all. And that you, is a You got a free personal rule. foul, right? You're absolutely right. That's an awful rule. Yeah. I'm sure that'll be changed by the next bowl game. Which comes up at the Well, they better Easter. hurry. Jermaine Brown Jr. is the ball carrier. And he'll pick up one yard for his play from scrimmage to open up this third quarter. Dylan Hopkins, the starting quarterback for the Blazers, was injured October 22nd. He started, started out hot, two for two at a 59-yard touchdown pass at Western Kentucky, misses the rest of the game. UAB loses that one 2017. They lose at Florida Atlantic 24-17. They lose in double overtime at UTSA 44-38 as able to complete there to Dexter Boykin for the first down. But that could have been a real turning point for the season for UAB if Hopkins could have remained healthy. Instead, they lose all three of those games and then have to scramble just to get ball eligible. Yeah, this is two teams that both had to deal with losing a starting quarterback. Miami lost their starting quarterback for a longer period of time, but UAB also in that situation. You lose your starting quarterback, it's going to be difficult to win games, especially in today's game where a lot of teams don't have a backup quarterback because of the transfer portal and guys leaving. Hand off to Jermaine Brown. Try on the right side for three. And again, if you're just joining us, Dwayne McBride was the leading rusher in college football in the nation this season. Over 1,700 yards. He had 10 100-yard rushing games this season. Guy averaged 155 rushing yards per game. Most decorated season in UAB school history. Opted out of this bowl game. We found out late last night. And he will declare for the NFL draft. So Jermaine Brown Jr., an excellent running back in his own right, he gets the opportunities here today. And that looked awkward and awful, and the flags come in. False start, number two, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Take a look at today's performance update prepared by Tax Act. And he's on the sideline. He's just not playing in the game. Here's Dwayne McBride. I'm guessing you decided that before this game. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, like I'm in charge. Be before he stuff. opted out, you decided the Wayne McBride would be your performance update. So you think a performance update should be by a player who's performing today? Is that what you're trying to say? Another terrible rule. But yes, I think the performance update okay. should be a guy performance? that is playing in this game. Got it. We'll have that updated for the next game, I'm sure. Thank you. And again, we've got some issues, not just in the booth, but on the there field, no too. Play. There is no play. The offense sub, the defense is allowed opportunity to match up. All right. And so we should say, while, while we hadn't seen that penalty yardage carrying over before, uh, good job by this Mountain West crew, these officials, led by referee Tim Davis. They had it right, correct the entire time. We cannot like the rule, but the yeah, rule's the absolutely rule, Absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I hope nobody took that as in us right. talking about the officials no, not no. doing their job, because they made the correct call, yes. and, and we were wrong uh, going into the half. But we were calling it the way we'd like to see it go. Is, yes. that, is that okay? Yeah. I'd like to see five downs, too. But I don't Absolutely think I, I don't right. That's going to happen. A couple here. guys in motion like Canadian ball. Right. CFL. Uh, Hopkins in some trouble, able to get out of that. Good job keeping his feet. And still going to be, well, they give him no gain on the play. Looked like a loss. Oscar McWood able to make the stop and he is the younger brother of Ryan McWood when I say younger brother I mean younger brother Ryan McWood was graduating high school when his younger brother Oscar was in elementary school and here they are they're playing in the same college football game that's a cool story. Yeah, it's interesting what COVID has done. It's added years to guys being yeah. able to stay in college. And so you'll have a guy that's been there seven years, and you want to talk about a veteran and a leader? Well, you got a guy that age been there seven years. He's going to be a tremendous leader. And both players, former walk-ons, awarded scholarships. Dylan Hopkins, the throw. Able to complete just across midfield. First down yardage at Shropshire. Ryan McWood, red-shirted in 2016. 2020 was the COVID season. Timeout for injured offensive player. Injured week one of last season. 
And that's how you get to seven seasons and 25 years old. Player spotlight brought to you by Hometown Lenders. And, and there is Ryan McWood. There's an injured player down on the field. Actually, a couple of players, one from each squad, down on the field right now. There's a flag came in. There's another personal foul. Yeah. Automatic first down. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Correction. That's Brian Ugu was the injured player for Miami. He's walking off. And Jacob Zeno warming up. Dylan Hopkins was banged up for UAB. Back at the hometown lenders, Bahamas Bowl. Dylan Hopkins on the sideline, and we'll show you why. Yeah, I mentioned he was limping earlier in the first right. half, and this just seems like that is something that is lingering. He didn't get hurt, and he's immediately saying, right. I got to come out. Right. And then he goes down. And here's the play to Trey Shopshire. It's a gain of 14. Now, originally they called it on Miami, the personal foul, but it was corrected to on Shopshire of UAB. They still get the first down out of it, but after the 14-yard gain, they walk him back 15 yards. And a pickup of one there by Jermaine Brown, Jr. Hopkins left the game earlier for Jacob Zeno. It's a flag down. And we were told that Zeno normally comes in on the fourth series anyway. Offside. Defense, number 11. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's on Corey Suttle. But we noticed Hopkins limping before Zeno came in. But that's part of the UAB game plan to get Zeno the, the fourth series. But now Zeno's in there because of the injury to Dylan Hopkins. And see if Chris gets any more on that. First down and five after the latest marker. There's a clean played first half, we said. Some penalty markers here in the second half. First down yardage. Salapak makes the stop on Brown, pick up a six. And Jermaine Brown does look like a solid running back. Back up to Dwayne McBride. Jermaine Brown Jr.'s nickname is Skull. His uncle, when he was a kid, thought he was a real knucklehead. So he called him Skull, and it's, it stuck, apparently. And, and UAB, UAB is starting to try to get back to the way they started this game. They started this game off looking really good offensively, moving the ball, and then they sort of, uh, in the second quarter, it went down. And this half has started off very sloppy, but they yeah. do have a first down on the 50-yard line, and we'll see if they can get, keep getting Skull the ball here Skull. and get their offense moving. Yeah. Knucklehead, I get it. Here's Jermaine Brown, Jr. First down yardage. He'll get the 40 of Miami now. And again, after a clunky start to this opening drive of the second half, they got some rhythm now, pick up of 11. And you didn't see a lot of chunk plays against this Miami rush defense. It's, it's really good during the season. It had been the four to the five yard gains by the UAB offense, but now you're starting to see they're getting back to what they do best, running the football. And it's these chunk plays when you watch them on film, they have a, as good a chance of hitting a home run running the ball as they do passing the ball. Fifth in the nation in terms of the rushing attack for UAB. They averaged 244 UAB yards is rushing. their first time out of the half. Full time out on the field. UAB spends a timeout with 9.41 left in the third quarter. See if they need that later in the game. We'll be right back. The Hometown Lenders Bahamas Bowl is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Nothing lazy about that river. That'll be me and Joey in a couple of hours. Absolutely. College football playoff semifinals, Saturday, December 31st. What a way to bring in the new year. Number two, Michigan, number three, TCU, the Verbo Fiesta Bowl. And number one, Georgia, number four, Ohio State, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. What do you like in that game, Joe? Just curious. Um, I think Ohio State gets a win. Really? You are Mr. They're, they're Ohio. Gonna, they're going to pull it off. Okay. On first down and 10. 
Pick up, loss of one on the play. Down to Chris. Dylan Hopkins out of the injury tent, wrapped up that right ankle. He was just talking with the medical training staff, pointing to the back of his ankle. He's trying to work it out, do some drop backs, figure out if he can play through the pain. He is still uh, has his helmet on and has not told the staff if he's able to go or not, but I'll keep you updated. Junior out of Maryville, Tennessee, Dylan Hopkins. Second down and 11 upcoming. Nine minutes to play, third quarter. It's been a good one. There are no bad ones, by the way, at the hometown lenders Bahamas Bowl. On the ground. Pick up a three on the play. That's Lee Witherspoon in the backfield, a sophomore from Birmingham. Rushed just 10 times this season. A couple of carries here. We've seen a number of times Miami be pretty good on defense the first and second down, and then they'll give up one of these third longs. They have to find a way to get off the field in a situation. They had momentum going into the half, getting that late touchdown. This is a chance for them to shut down this UAB offense and get the ball back and see if they can take a lead. Third down and eight from the Miami 40. One clap. Zeno has all sorts of time. Great protection, and now trying to run out of it. And he'll get the 37 and a half yard line and a pickup of one. Protection was great. Coverage in the secondary for Miami even better. And that was a definition of a covered sack. You're right. That offensive line, there was no pressure whatsoever for Zeno in the pocket. He could still be standing in the pocket. I always wonder when quarterbacks do that, when you have that much time, they start to get uncomfortable. And they start to feel like, I have to run. I have to get out of the pocket. But that offensive line was doing such a nice job. Zeno could have stayed in the pocket a couple more counts. So it's fourth and seven, offense on the field, instead of electing for a 55 or 56 yard attempt. And Zeno's out of the shotgun. To throw. Across the middle, juggled and dropped. Looked like Brody Dalton had it for a second and couldn't hang on. And UAB turns it over on downs to Miami. Miami of Ohio brought the house. They didn't have enough guys on the back end to cover all the receivers for UAB, so they just took their shot. They get lucky here, it's a nice throw. Can't hold on to the ball by Dalton, but that is Miami saying, look, we're gonna take our chance right now. We're just gonna send the house, see if we can get the ball back, and it worked out in their favor. So a 10-play drive coming out of the locker room, took a lot of time off the clock, nothing to show for it. And Miami trails by four, and they've got the football. They start with great field position. From their own 39. On the handoff to Tyree Shelton straight ahead. Hits the Bahamas Bowl logo. And a pick up a six on first down. And last time Miami had the ball, they went 11 plays for 65 yards and got a touchdown to make this a football game. We'll see if they can keep that going going into the second half. They got the stop they needed, so they should have the momentum. They're already at their 45-yard line. We talked to earlier, like, they need to get some chunk plays, and they finally got one on the last drive. Let's see if they can keep it going. Second down and three. Smith, quarterback draw. I think UAB was ready for that. There was no room, nowhere to go for Avion Smith. And as good of an athlete as Avion Smith is, there was absolutely no shot he was getting out of this. UAB sends a blitz, which we've seen him do a number of times in this game. We'll see if they do it again on third down. That's what they typically have been doing on third downs. They send their linebackers, and they've gotten home a number of times. Yeah, Ellis and Fairbanks able to clog that middle. Kenny Tracy's in there on third and six. Avion Smith, pressure's picked up. Thrown down the right sideline, there was contact, and I don't see a flag out. So incidental contact, only now is Mac Hippenhammer picking himself up off the turf, and he looks to be injured in some way. Yep. No contact at all there. Good job by Starling Thomas, who's there in coverage. The grass isn't as soft in Ohio right now. You 
when we're down in the Bahamas, it's warm. And you start to wonder if some of these receivers, some of these guys that are running a lot, are going to have trouble dealing with the heat as this game goes on. But that was just a receiver on soft grass going down. Dom Jobin got the punt away. Oh. And it bounces up into the hands of Starling Thomas. Loose football down and inside the five-yard line. And Miami signaling they have it. Let's see. This could be just the break the Red Hawks need. Still no signal. They're figuring out the bottom of the pile. And Miami has the football. The Red Hawks able to recover on the muff by Starling Thomas. It's Ambe Caldwell with the good hands. Off the muff punt by Starling Thomas. And this ball is on the ground. It looked like eight people had a chance to recover this ball. If you're my, just, just jump, no, no, not that guy. There it is, there it is. There. Finally. Hey, so that's a bad break for Thomas, right? He has the coverage there on Hippenhammer, goes back to get the punt, takes a wicked bounce in front of him, leading to the muff. Wicked bounce, guys in your face running at you in that situation. And I think these guys should, should catch more punts. I think we yep. I think returners nowadays let too many balls hit the ground. So that's the mistake you there. these kind of situations. Yeah. You can fair catch this ball and run up and catch it. First and goal for Miami. Kevin Davis takes the handoff and into the end zone for the touchdown. And the Miami Red Hawks, for the first time today, have a lead. 12 to 10. From the way this game started to where we are right now, we've seen a number of things happen, but give Miami credit. They hung in there. They got the drive at the end of the first half, and now they've started the second half with a defensive stop, a turnover, and they'll get your touchdown. Second rushing touchdown of the season for Kevin Davis. Nicholson on for the extra point. And boots it through. And just like that, Miami of Ohio has the lead. Just as you thought. 13-10, Miami on top. The hometown lenders, Bahamas Bowl. Welcome back, Miami, up 13 to 10. Join with UAB new head coach Trent Dilfer. Coach, thanks so much for joining. When you got the call that UAB was interested in you to be the new head coach, what intrigued you about the program? What I know about the program? What intrigued you about oh, it? Oh, yeah. a lot. And it, again, it was a long process. You know, I was trying to finish up a state title with my team, and I wanted to kind of go on an information gathering journey with them. And uh, But what I found out is the three things I always thought you need to build a dominant program in college football. You need a president's committed to excellence. He's got to wake up thinking about it and go to bed thinking about it. He's got a huge institution. He wants every department, every part of that to be excellent. Dr. Watts is that way. You know, AD that understands the impact of football. It's not more important than anything. Listen, I had three Division I volleyball player daughters. I don't want football to be more important. But the fact of the matter is it's more impactful. And even the donor base has proved it. And our donor base proved it when they brought back football. So it has all the ingredients to build a dominant college program. I really enjoyed the relationships I made in the process. And I'm really excited about the future of UAB football. This is an interesting time period because there's bowl prep with this current team. There's early signing day. There's transfer portal. What have been your priorities since you took over two weeks ago? Yeah, Number one, uh, establishing a good relationship with Coach Vincent. Uh, he's a wonderful man. What he was able to do with this team and his staff, considering the, um, the awkwardness of the situation, is really admirable. So I wanted to come in and serve him. I didn't want to get in his way. Day one, I said, this is your team. Finish strong. Uh, and he reciprocated. He was really kind to me through this process. We spent a lot of time together uh, and kind of showed me the lay of the land. And then we had to get on the recruiting trail. Um, and that was priority number one. So we, I've been not sleeping a whole lot, drinking by a fire hose. Uh, trying to go, go and identify ODs, we call those our dudes, the kind of guys that fit our philosophy, how we're going to run this thing, that are really good football players, good student athletes, good people. Uh, that's who we're going to bring in the program and hopefully win a lot of games with them. You've won at the highest level, have a Super Bowl, you've coached high school, you have three daughters who have played college volleyball. 
What about that? What have you learned about today's athlete that feel like suits you to be a good head coach? I think, unfortunately, this has become institution-centric. It's become coach-centric, and we've forgotten that the student-athletes are the ones that matter. Uh, we'll be student-athlete-centric. We're doing this to serve them. Uh, we'll be all about serving the student athlete. We want to get the best out of them. We want to make them great husbands and fathers. They're going to be professionals in something, right? Lawyers, doctors, some will be professional football players. But we want to put a staff together to really pour into these young men and help them be better humans. I don't know if you've turned on the news lately, but it's really hard to turn on the news and feel like our country's in a great place, no matter what you're watching, right? We want to help change that with this next generation by pouring into young men and helping them change this world for the better. And they'll play good football in the process. When you met these young men that are currently on the team, what was your message to them when you stepped in that room? Just that, that if you want to be served, if you want to chase your best, uh, if you want to pursue your maximum potential, this is going to be the place for you. But if you're here to, for transactional experiences, if you're here not to go to school, and if you're here not to treat women right, and if you're here not to make an impact in our communities, this probably isn't the place for you. Uh, because again, I'm, I'm very steadfast on this. I think too much is made about what happens between the lines. I think what you do outside the lines becomes an overflow and it overflows onto the field. We prove that at the high school level. And people say, hey, listen, he's a high school coach. He doesn't get it. Just watch. We'll pour into these kids and it'll be a great product out there. You worked in TV for a bit with ESPN. Steve Levy wants to know, harder trying to be on TV or head coach? Your job's easy. <laughs> you just stop sweating so much up there. Appreciate it, Coach. Congratulations on the job. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, full disclosure, uh, he's a pal, longtime colleague. Spent a lot of Monday night post games on NFL fields with Trent Dilfer. And so you got a little snapshot into what Dilfer's all about. What was your thoughts on what he had to say? I love everything he had to say. Um, but unfortunately, uh, coaches are judged on winning and losing. Yep. You know what I mean? And so everything he said is absolutely terrific. You would love for it to be that way. You would love for every coach and every organization, every school to be thinking all those thoughts. But in this world of college football, you are judged on whether you win games or lose games. And we'll see if he can do that. There's an injured player down. That's Brian Ugu. Second time he's been shaken up this afternoon. He's had a really good game, too. Transom from Rutgers. As he's attended to. Again, we're just kicking off bowl season here today. The first of some 43 bowl games. 40 of which on the ESPN Family Networks. Up next, conference champs will square off in the Duluth Trading Cure Bowl. UTSA and Troy coming up 3 Eastern. Watch it on ESPN. The Deportes or the app travels with you anywhere you're going. So it's a great time of year, college football, bowl season. Just so much fun, and the games are so interesting. Still waiting for some trick plays, flea flicker. Yeah, and if, and if you weren't listening Fake earlier, punks. in the UTSA and Troy game, take the yeah. over. Yes. It's going to be a lot, of, a lot of offense in that game. You might be able to get to the sports book in time to get something Oh, down. I'm going to try my best, believe me. I'm in for half. Half of the winnings. Exactly. On first down and 10. Lee Witherspoon getting a good bunch of runs here. Pick up of six inside of four minutes to play. And again, Miami enjoying a 13-10 lead. The Red Hawks were a double-digit underdog coming into this one. Impressive, gutty effort. And for a large part of this game, UAB looked like they were uh, the better football team, especially for a large part of that first half. And since Miami has turned the tables, found ways to make big plays and getting that punt return uh, fumble and, and then scoring that touchdown. Miami now feels like a team that has the momentum if they can just get another stop on the defensive side as UAB starts to crank up this run game. Yeah, Lee Witherspoon becoming a real factor here in the second half. Transfer from Mississippi State. Carried the football only 10 times all season for 52 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Look at that hole. I mentioned this offensive line, all five starters uh, got all conference honors. Yeah. I don't know that that has happened any other time. This had, definitely hasn't happened in the game that I've called. But it, a lot of times it doesn't matter who's running the ball because the offensive line is so impressive in opening holes like they did on the, on the last play. Witherspoon, four carries today for 23 yards. Really halfway to a season total. And he'll add to that, took a good hit at the end of the play. He's down to the 30. Pick up a four. Several 
Now Witherspoon will come off. Great to see Dylan Hopkins back in there at quarterback. Yeah, he's back. He's back on the field, but it's, it seems like the UAB offense is really settled in right now and they've decided we're going to try to be more physical than you are. We're going to get back to what got us to this point, and that's running the football. They've run it for over 240 yards a game this season. That's how they make their living. We'll see if they'll keep that, keep that going. Second and five. Hopkins off the play fake. Able to roll to his right and complete inside the 30. That football came out. It's like Dallas Payne on his first catch. Give him five on the play. Look, like that ball popped out at the end there for a second. And it's amazing. The ball popped out. Looks like Miami's going to get another turnover. And then it falls right back in his lap. That's clean living right there. Absolutely. Dallas Payne doing something right. Payne made just two catches during the regular season. That's also a great thing about the bowl games. Guys who don't often get opportunities, extra three weeks of practice. Yep. Get some chances in the bowl game. Third down and one. Jermaine Brown Jr. is straight ahead. First down and still on his feet. And down to the 16-yard line, pick up a 12. And a first down for UAB. Miami had their entire team, their entire defense is on the line of scrimmage uh, trying to stop this run, and they still couldn't do anything about it. They're an outstanding run defense, but they are getting tested right now by what might be a better rush offense. We'll see what controls their end of this game when we get into the fourth quarter. But right now, the UAB offense is really starting to turn the ball out. Well, there's the defense you're talking about, that run defense shutting down Jermaine Brown Jr., led by Matthew Salapek. What a career-high 17-tackle game at Ball State a season ago. Loss of two on the play. And they've run the football seven times on this drive. Passed just four times. I think Miami just ticks. made a decision. Yep. We're coming. If you can run it on us, you can. But we're not going to sit back. We're not going to play coverage. We're going to bring our, all our guys to the line of scrimmage. And you got to prove to us that you're more physical. Let's see if they actually snap this final seconds, third quarter. And they wanted to run the play and didn't get it off in time. Zero's on the clock. What do you say we go to the fourth quarter? In the hometown Lenders Bahamas Bowl in a three-point game. Just the way you draw it up. The weather's glorious. The football's been pretty good, too. Fourth quarter on the way from Nassau. Getting ready for fourth quarter action. The hometown lenders Bahamas Bowl. 13-10 Miami leads UAB. And things are heating up on the field as they are on the scoreboard. And down to Chris. Well, you can tell the heat's starting to get to this UAB sideline. That was something that Chuck Martin had noted coming out of halftime. But I've seen guys go into the medical tent, getting IVs, getting stretched out, cramping here on the sidelines. Listen, they play in the heat, but it's been a long time since they played in mid-80s. And that Miami defense has been on the field a lot in the third quarter. That pass is complete. Down to the five. Fred Farrier on the receiving end. It's a really nice job by Hawkins standing in the pocket and just delivering, I'm sorry, Zeno standing in the pocket and just delivering this ball to the middle. It's a nice, easy hitch route. You sit in the middle, you find the zones, and it's an easy first down. 13th play of this drive is upcoming. Again, time of possession in the third quarter. UAB had it for 13 and a half minutes. It's Miami defense, they could be gassed, especially with all that heat. First down and goal now. Dylan Hopkins hands it off to Jermaine Brown Jr. straight ahead. Second and goal upcoming. I was wondering when the heat would take its toll on these guys. We, we mentioned the weather up north, uh, the, the weather in Birmingham, not quite like this 80 degrees. And I was a guy that cramped when I played. And in the fourth quarter was when it used to start, it starts to settle in. Man, I'm working harder than I'm used to working at this time of year. And then you think about the practice schedule for these guys. They want to have fun. They want to enjoy themselves. So they haven't had a chance to practice as hard in this climate. Great so point. today, they're dealing with the heat that they haven't dealt with probably in a couple months since it's been this kind of weather where each of these teams play. 
Second down and goal. Bit of a low snap, handoff to Brown, straight ahead, up the middle. Touchdown, UAB. And the Blazers go back on top. That entire drive felt like an attitude drive for UAB. It felt like they were saying, we're getting back to what we do best. Regardless of how good the Miami Rush defense is, we got to this point by running the football, and we're going to prove that we can do that here late in this game. Really important extra point coming here from Matt Quinn. Perfect on the season with extra points. And he boots it through. UAB back on top. A four-point lead. Minute and a half into this fourth quarter. This is just physical football. A great offensive line between the tackles. We think we're more physical than your defense. We're going to run right at you. Brian Vincent, the interim head coach, has to feel good about that, getting that lead back. Talked about Vincent, said he's given his heart and soul, his, his family's heart and soul to this UAB program, and he'll be exiting after this one. His wife, Holly, is watching along with Holly's grandmother. They call her Baba. She is 93 years old. And we want to say a special hello to Baba, send her our best from all the UAB players and coaching staffs, and from all of us at ESPN as well. And wherever Coach Vincent is coaching next season, we're hoping a year from now, Bob is able to cheer him on, root him on from whatever stadium he might be in. Thinking about you. 17-13, UAB. I've not seen a lot of kick returns. Again, that's blasted nearly to the beach, which is some two miles away from here. Not too many bowl stadiums where you're going to have a beach two miles away. But. No, not at all. And, Stick and with me, again, pal. I'll take you places. Hey, man, I appreciate this. And, and when they asked me if I wanted to do this bowl game, I said, who's calling the game? They said, Matt Barry. You said, no way. They I'm said, not Matt Barry. I said, no thanks. And I found out Matt Barry, <laughs> uh, he, 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 uh, he didn't get his passport correct. These are issues They Barry. said, Steve Levy will be filling in. I said, I'm in. Uh, Hawaii Bowl is close. Hometown Lenders, Bahamas Bowl. And a shout out to Hometown Lenders as well, the title sponsor. Got a chance to visit with some of the Hometown Lenders people. And, you know, they sponsor a bowl game, but they're doing much more, much more, and really providing great aid and help and service to people here in the Bahamas. That ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage. Still caught. It's a pickup of seven. Jalen Walker on the receiving end. He's, he's going to limp off. Looked like Keandre swoops deflected that at the line of scrimmage. Still able to complete the pass. Man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. A great job by defensive end getting his hands on his ball, but an even better job by Walker still coming back toward the football to make a positive gain and now set up a second and three. Yeah, so Walker talk, took an additional shot to the helmet while he was prone on the ground after making that catch. Second down and three. Here's Tyree Shelton. And he'll have first down yard. It's a good second effort by Tyree Shelton. Great job by Shelton getting the first down here. If you're Miami, you want to stay out of third downs. That's when UAB has sent their blitz, and they've had a lot of success shutting down the Miami offense on third downs. And so you get your first down on second down. It resets the chains, but it also takes UAB out of their blitz packages they'd like to, to put in on third downs. First down and 10 from 36. Change up the snap count a little bit. Maybe even change the play. Let's get a trick play. Little fake. And now throw to Kevin Davis out of the backfield. And he's able to stay in bounds. Got a cross midfield. Nice run by Kevin Davis. Pick up a 15. And we talked about Avion Smith uh, developing as a passer. And you see a quarterback come up to the line of scrimmage. He's audible into a different play. And that play gains you 15 yards. That gives a quarterback coach, an uh, offensive coordinator, a team more confidence in this young man to run this offense. Longest rush of the day for Miami. 
He's supposed to be the fastest player on the team, Kevin Davis. Joey, apparently you were pretty fast back in your day. I've, I've heard that. They fake the throw. And it's a run play. Keon Mosey. I did some research on my partner, Joey Galloway. Did you really run the 40 in less than 4-2? Yeah, yes, it was. It was definitely less than 4-2. That's a good way to put it. I had yet 4.18. Uh, I've heard 4.17, but I'll take 1-8. <laughs> Either way, that's fast. We'll be right back. The speedster. The college football playoff semifinals, Saturday, December 31st on ESPN. Oh, yeah, the Megacast is back for the semifinals on December 31st. Nine different viewing options for each semifinal. You got the field pass with the Pat McAfee show on ESPN2. I used to do the field pass with McAfee. I did, the mega, I did the mega cast before. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's fun. It's a good time. Yeah, it was me and Matt Berry and uh, Jesse Palmer. We got in trouble because Palmer was talking too much. Really? Yeah, halftime they shut us down. Got it. McAfee never gets in trouble. He's moved on to bigger and better. Look at him. Pat McAfee will be joined by RG3. His pal AJ Hawk, Darius Butler, and more. The mega cast includes Command Center, AT&T 5G Skycast, the All-22, Hometown Radio Calls, you can see the halftime marching band performances on the ESPN app. You want to watch college football, the playoff games, but well, we've got you covered in every way possible. Second and two upcoming. From the 31 of UAB. Davion Smith takes the snap, gives it to Tyree Shelton. Give him a yard on the play. And bring up a third down and one. Pretty sure this is two down territory. Uh, if, if you're Miami in this offense, I, again, we, we talked analytics uh, with Coach Martin. He had a good laugh yes. about, about the analytics and, and, and his approach to uh, how he uses them, which means he really doesn't use them a whole lot. But this has to be two down territory. Coach Martin said he's the only guy in the world who hasn't bought into analytics. And he is a stats guy. He loves numbers. He was an accounting major. Third down and one. Kenny Tracy in there. Motion to tight end Bolden in there. And they actually gave it to Bolden, the first man through. And he got the first down. Avion Smith able to pick it up. He leads the team in rushing and passing all season. First Miami quarterback to do that. Clock winds, nine and a half to go. Miami trailing by four and on the move. Good looking drive. Smith fakes the handoff and keeps it. And he's all the way down to the 20 yard line. Davion Smith looked like he could have been stopped in the backfield. They went up high on Smith and couldn't bring him down. He picks up seven. You got to bring more than one guy to the party if you want to catch Smith, uh, especially if he can see you coming. Make a guy miss, the duck under. You got to bring more than one guy, or Smith is a good enough athlete to make the one guy miss and pick up seven yards. And once again, keeping this offense in a second and short, which is much easier to make these kind of play calls. Avion Smith, 14 carries, 25 yards rushing in the first half. Here in the second, four carries for 13 yards. And he'll let Tyree Shelton do the work here. And the ground game really working. Pick up a nine for Miami. And even the UAB defense feeling it a little bit now. And it, and it feels like Eric Kohler, the offensive coordinator, is in a rhythm right now on, on this drive specifically. But it started at the end of the first half. The offense of Miami is more in a rhythm now where they're handing it off. Avion Smith will get a carry. They're keeping them off balance and they're getting first down and really good yardage on these first downs, which is making it much easier for the offense. Tenth play of the drive, and they have run it eight different times. Only a couple of passes. Pick up a two there for Smith. Chewing into that clock as well. And obviously it gets tougher when you get to this, this area of the field because now there's their safeties are just automatically closer to the line of scrimmage. The corners are just closer to the line of scrimmage. So you have to be a little bit more creative in your run game to run it when you get down to the 10-yard line. UAB has just one timeout left in the game. 
See, that plays a significant role. Second down and eight. Little shovel to Kevin Davis. And Davis gets the 10 yard line. No gain, there's some contact. Well out of bounds. And a lot of hooping and hollering on the sideline. That was almost a great play call, I except you have a veteran in Noah Wilder playing linebacker for UAB. If you see this, the underneath shovel pass, and it is wide open until Noah Wilder reads this play, comes up, and just gets a piece of the ball carrier, allowing the rest of the defense to rally. And how about Wilder? They thought maybe he could get through a series, one series. And here he is on the field leading the charge. Third down and eight, critical play. Smith. Lofts one, end zone, it is caught for the touchdown. Kenny Tracy went up and got it. The ball hung up in the air forever. And back and forth we go. And I have Tracy listed at 5'10 on, on my car. I don't know what you got, buddy. He looked like he was 6'3 on this play. Just goes up and makes a play. Flag does come in after the touchdown. Kenny Trace, sophomore, out of Indianapolis, and it's his first touchdown of the season. The touchdown is good. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 12 of UAB. That is his first unsportsmanlike of the game. It will be enforced on the kickoff. That's on Grayson Cash, fifth-year senior, and the leader of that defensive backfield. What a play, what a throw. Let's give Evian Smith credit for that throw and here's Graham Nicholson to attempt the extra point remember Nicholson as he missed extra point earlier in the game snap of the place and Nicholson nails that one through and it's Miami with a new lead in the game 12 plays, 75 yards, took six and a half off the clock. The Blazers get the ball next. The Hometown Lenders Bahamas Bowl is brought to you by Hometown Lenders. Is your mortgage working for you? At Lent is Paradise Island. Paradise perfected. And Tax Act. File for less and get more. Back at the Hometown Lenders Bahamas Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. All these Bahamas Bowls, this is the eighth edition. They, they always seem to be close, tight games in the fourth quarter. Well, it's not always accurate. The case just feels that way. There's Big Ben. Ben Roethlisberger in the house. Two-time Super Bowl champion who attended the University of Miami. As did uh, John Harbaugh. As did Sean McVay. Let's go some football royalty. Ben's got a good seat. Only good seats here, by the way, at the Hometown Lenders Bahamas Bowl. Every seat's a good seat. 15,000-seat stadium. Jermaine Brown and Starling Thomas back deep. It's a short kick there. And it's fallen on by one of the up-back players. And so UAB will take over. Fred Farrier, part of the Good Hands team there. And UAB will take over. They find themselves again trailing by three. Lots of twists and turns in this one, Joey Galloway. Yeah, and UAB in their last drive decided to run the football. Now we're down to six minutes and 48 seconds. Uh, you wonder if you decide you're just going to go back to what you do, which is run the football, you have to be successful. It's going to shorten down the rest of this game. So you don't have, you, you wonder how many more possessions you're going to get. Right. So it becomes a situation where you have to get points at some point in time. So do you have that much confidence that you can run this ball? You have, what, 78 yards to go to get there? We'll see if they have the confidence in this run game to get it. Jermaine Brown Jr. straight ahead for two. Well, Wander is under seven minutes to play. And that number one rush defense in the MAC will be tested from Miami. Had the top scoring defense in the MAC as well, 34th in the nation. 
have only allowed 22 and a half points per game. And right now they're better than that today against a very good UAB team. Don't be fooled by the Blazers' 6-6 six and six record. Here's Jermaine Brown. And did he fumble the football? Miami says they have it. And they do. Jermaine Brown Jr. coughs up the football. And the Red Hawks are going to take over with great field position, already leading by three with six minutes to play. And there's that rush defense by Miami when it looked like Jermaine Brown Jr. was going to get seven, eight yards. These guys from Miami, they're still hitting. You would never assume that this team came from a cold weather area. The weather is not getting to them. They still look fresh on the defensive ball. Even though they played a lot of snaps in that first half on defense, this defense come out in the second half, and they still look fresh, and they're still flying around. Matthew Salopek came up with that football. Jaquez Warren knocked it free. Third turnover of the game. And wow, Miami's in business here. And again, UAB has just one timeout remaining. Had to burn a couple of ones early. It's always interesting when you meet with coaches and, and you ask them questions about how do you win games, and they all talk about winning the turnover battle, and it sort of sounds like coach speak at times, but it is so true in these kind of games. You win the turnover battle, and you get costly turnovers in the right situations. Now Miami, this is their second time getting a turnover. The, the other one was down inside the four yard line. This time, they're inside the 30. So they're getting the ball back in scoring position. Down to Chris. Yeah, Joey made the point that Miami feels fresh. The difference between these two sidelines, Miami brought tents. They have a place to hide from the sun that's been blasting for the last three hours, whereas UAB did not. First down and 10. Kevin Davis, the ball carrier, lost a one on the play. The clock definitely becomes a factor here. And that's the problem when you turn it over, especially in your red zone. If you're Miami, um, obviously you'd like to get a touchdown out of this, but you also have your eye on the clock. You realize that UAB wants to run the football, so you want to take some time off of this clock and shorten up this game. And really should already be in field goal range. Tyree Shelton in there to the left of Avion Smith. Smith's played a really good game. A couple of nice touchdown passes. One clap and the handoff to Shelton. He's tripped up in the backfield. Bring up a third down. Michael Fairbanks got to him. Gonna bring up a third down and 12. And you can just see by how, how long it has taken Miami to, to snap that ball. They're absolutely starting to think, let's shorten this game. Let's take some time off of this clock. What's your play call here, pal? I'm going to run it. Third and 12? Two times. Keep that clock moving. Yeah, I'm going to run it Two twice. Two times? Yes, twice. If you don't get the first. Well, if you do get the first, I'm running it again anyhow. So, <laughs> so, so it's all the same. How about if you don't get the first? You, you want to try a field goal? No, here? no, no. Analytics. Okay. I'm going to run it. Okay, Captain Analytics. And they're going to throw. Avion Smith down the sideline. And his receiver, Miles Marshall, got all turned around. And it's going to bring up a fourth down and 12. Well, there went my analytics right out the window. The analytics Chuck, said Chuck run Martin. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chuck Martin said, you don't like analytics. Hey, coach, the analytics said run it first. Yeah. And then run it again, not throw it deep and kick it. Here's Graham Nicholson. Going to be a 47-yard field goal attempt. Alec Bebelheimer holds it. And the snapper is Brendan Beatty. Trying to put Miami up six, and it's no good. Graham Nicholson misses the field goal from 47. Stays a three-point game. Miami, no points off the turnover. UAB trailing by three with the football. Welcome back to the hometown lenders Bahamas Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. We got a good one down the stretch, partner. Surprisingly, the way it started, yes. didn't feel like we would be at this point, but Miami right. woke up at the end of the first half, and now we have a game and they have the lead. 
can their rush defense step up here and get another stop? We'll see that last drive. Unable to pick up any points. See how much that hurts them down the stretch. On first down and 10, Dylan Hopkins has a nice pocket. Deep throw across the middle of the field. It is caught. Who else? Trey Shropshire for 50 yards. And UAB comes out firing. Shropshire had 120 receiving yards in the first half, but had just one catch so far in the second half until that 50-yard play. And this is not the case of Miami putting everyone in the box and playing man-to-man. -man. This is double coverage on the back end. There's two safeties back there. She should be able to make this play. Hopkins just beats him with a better throw. Dylan Hopkins has been banged up throughout, in and out of the lineup. Perfect strike there. What a great connection he has with Shropshire. Here's Jermaine Brown, Jr. You have to wonder what's going through his head. He gets bailed out by his defense after fumbling the football in the last series. And now he's back in there trying to go win the game for UAB. When you get in those situations, you make a, a mistake the last time you touch the ball. You are dying to get back on the field and get the ball in your hands to try to make up for it. And really, it's the best way to erase that play is to get back on the field and touch the ball again. You see what Shropshire has done today, 183 yards. Corey Davis has the was tied for the record with 183 receiving yards. Perhaps you've heard of Corey Davis out of Western Michigan back in 2015. He's had a terrific NFL career. Jermaine Brown Jr. again. He's inside the 15. Bring up a third and short. Now, Miami didn't listen. I said, we're going to run it twice, Steve. Yeah. I'm going to try it again. Right. My, my track record isn't great in play calling in this game, but I'm going at it again. We're going to run this ball twice down here in this situation. Jermaine Brown Jr., by the way, over 100 yards rushing, 23 carries, 102. Touchdown, has the fumble. On third down and two now. Handoff straight ahead. Brown is belted. It's really close. Really close. I don't think he got there. They're calling us fourth down. Hmm. Fourth down, I'm coming here. This is a gutsy play call of your UAB. Well, they have one timeout left. You have that offensive line that, that UAB has. Yeah. All five guys are, are all conference honors. If you run this football, you believe in that offensive line to get you this yard. All right, the clock is stopped at 151. But if you don't get it on fourth one, that's really the game then, right? Think positive, Steve. For which that, team, that, which that, team well, I think a positive for? For, for, for the analytics of, of the football. Right. For an offensive line that has had the kind of year they had. I get it. Football. I understand. Maybe they're looking at the spot of that football. Come back fourth and one. Decision. A play call either way. Fans, check out the ESPN app for the Capital One post game immediately following this contest. Might be a long way from having this one decided. Let's see. Jermaine Brown, Dylan Hopkins run out there. Offense on the field. UAB was charged a timeout. There was no measurement. This is fourth down and one. And maybe the game hanging in the balance. UAB is out of timeouts. Not going for the tying field goal here. They want to win this in regulation. Handoff straight ahead. Jermaine Brown Jr. untouched into the end zone for the 12-yard score. And the Blazers back on top in this seesaw affair. Wow. That was strength on strength. An outstanding offensive line with an offense that rushes the ball for over 240 yards a game against the number one rush defense in the MAC. The offensive line won out. What an incredible hole, incredible run, and now we'll see if Miami can answer. A minute 31 left for Miami to answer. The Red Hawks have all three timeouts. And how critical is this extra point? Matt Quinn, perfect, splits the uprights. Field goal won't help the Red Hawks anymore. They need a touchdown. 24-20.
favor of the Blazers of UAB. Look at that offensive line work. Wow. And you do like to see that, right? The kid makes the mistake earlier on the fumble and now goes in and scores what might be the game-winning touchdown, all while sitting behind and being in the background of the large shadow of Dwayne McBride, the leading rusher in the country who opted out of the bowl game today. Hands things over to Jermaine Brown, Jr. Good story there. And probably his easiest run of the day. I mean, that, <laughs> that offensive line, uh, fourth and in inches, game on the line, and you get behind that offensive line that's had an outstanding season, and just watch him go to work. Brown's over 100 yards, 24 carries, 116 yards, and two touchdowns. Both of those coming in the fourth quarter. What a game. You're Miami. Find out if Avion Smith has, has developed into that playmaker we've been talking about. He's going to have to throw the ball a few times. See if Jalen Walker gets a chance to return. He will not. And here we go. A minute 31 left. The game and the season on the line. A couple of six and six squads battling in the Bahamas where everything's better. And again, Miami's got all three timeouts remaining. We've seen this Miami team make a comeback against Ball State in their last game of the season That's to right. get Ball eligible. So they've been in this situation before, and they were successful. They found a way to get it done, and that gets you confidence. When your team is in that situation, you find ways to, to make plays. We'll see if that carries over today. That game you're talking about, Miami was down 17-3, middle of the third quarter. Here's Avion Smith to throw. Safe pass across the middle to Jalen Walker. Pick up four on the play out to the 29-yard line. And there's a player now for UAB. And that's Drew Tuazama, one of the key edge players on this Blazers defense. And he looks to be in some real pain. Tuazama's one of the better players on this team of this defense, but because of some of the players ahead of him, didn't get a ton of playing time throughout the season. But with Sanders and Taylor out, and you never know when Wilder's going to have to come out of the game. Tuazama's taken on a much bigger role. He's had a nice game in there. And he's able to jog off the field gingerly there with a minute 19 left. Gives Miami a chance to breathe, too. Noel Wilder's in there. What a story he is. They were hoping he'd make it through the first series of the game. Like a ceremonial first series. He's been in there the whole way. Here's Avion Smith. He's in trouble. And they're going to catch him from behind. A pickup of one on the play. Kyle Harrell able to wrap him up from behind. And a timeout is taken. And Avion Smith will looked like he saw something he liked. And UAB flash in front of his face. He brought it back down and tried to take off run. And now it sets up a third and medium here. And again, this young quarterback has been in this situation in their last game against Ball State and found a way to make a play. This is as big as that game. We talked with Coach Martin about that last game again. Down 17-3, middle of the third quarter at Ball State, needing it to become ball eligible. And Coach Martin said he talked to his dad after the game, and his dad told him there was, hey, there was a 2% chance he would win in the game. And, and Coach Martin said, that's higher than I thought the percentage was of us winning that game. And they did. Smith had a rushing touchdown after that, and a 34-yard touchdown pass with a minute 42 left to Miles Marshall to win 18-17. Need another comeback here. Third down and five. Here's Smith. And his throw is just too low to Kenny Tracy. That play sort of lacked any urgency for a third and five. And now here's a fourth and five in the game on the line. And Avion Smith had more time than he assumed. It, it, it was only three men rushing. And so you have time. And UAB has done a nice job blitzing on third downs. And I think Avion Smith just rushed himself to make a bad pass because he's assuming the blitz is coming. So here we go. Fourth and five. Avion Smith 
looking to run, makes one man miss, and has the first down. And a flag comes in. That'll stop the clock with 61 seconds left. That first juke by Smith to make the UAB defender miss was critical. Picked up six, needed five. We'll check the flag. Personal foul, targeting, number zero, defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. The previous player targeted is under review. So the 15 yards will stand. Keandre swoops on the target. Let's take another look. lowered the helmet, but it Absolutely. didn't look like he got him with the helmet. No, I thought he missed from the other angle. Here's a little look at it. And I think an official, you gotta, you gotta realize the angle at which the official threw the flag from. And so if he's behind this play, right. you're looking at it, and it looks like he catches. So he does catch him with the side of his helmet. Right, not the crown. Not the crown. Still a shot to the head and neck area. comes at a critical time of the game. Sixty-one seconds left. And I think it's interesting. We only seen one official throw a flag in this case. Right. And a lot of times on these calls, you'll see three or four flags come flying in because it is so obvious from so many angles because this is not obvious from every angle. You only see one flag come flying in. Hey, that's a really hard live call for these officials. Absolutely. These are Mountain West officials. So they're taking a look at it on replay to make sure they get this right. The 15 yards are gonna stand. Now we're just talking about an ejection. Let's see. Here it is. After review, there is no targeting on the play. However, the result of the play is a first down. So no ejection, no targeting, still a first down. That was a six yard pickup on fourth and five. And I think it's the right call. And, and I think it's the right call to throw the flag. Take a look at it and, and make sure you get it right. Swoops will stay in there. From the 36. Final minute, clock winding now. Miami has two timeouts left. Avion Smith throwing out to the left. Short gain to Walker. They're going to need some chunk plays here. Yeah, and UAB is now just rushing three, sitting back in an eight-man zone. Another six-yard gain. Second timeout taken by Miami. You always wonder, you know, in, at the end of games, teams get into a prevent defense. And a lot of times you'll see an offense that hasn't had a ton of success throwing the ball all of a sudden come alive. You're going away from what you did to have success defensively, which was send your blitz to the quarterback, uh, get in the backfield, make plays, to go to more of a just rush three, sit back, play eight in coverage, and we'll see which one wins out. If I'm the defensive coordinator, I want to stick with what I came in in my head to do, which was send my blitzes in passing situations, which has worked out pretty well for them. David Reeves, the defensive coordinator for UAB. Let's see what he dials up on second down. And Smith able to make the first man miss. Lofts it down the middle of the field and it is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Kevin Davis. Thought he had it. 39 seconds left, third down of coming. It's like this ball hung up in the air for 10 seconds. It, it, was just, it just wouldn't come down. Avion Smith does a terrific job uh, of getting out of the grass with the defensive end coming around the corner and then gives his receiver a chance. Pretty good coverage on the back end yep. and a long time to cover, to cover for Bynum, but he makes a play. 
Third down and three. Clock becoming a factor here. Miami can only stop it one more time. Got to get the first down first. And worry about the rest after. So there's your short pass low to Tracy, who couldn't keep his feet. So he's down to gain a one, and he knows the mistake that is. And the last timeout is taken from Miami with 30 seconds left. So they don't get the first down, and they're forced to use their last timeout. And Avion Smith has struggled with those throws. Yes. The ones right that you and would left, think would pass. be the easier throws to make. It, it, I don't, I'm not quite sure why that is in this game. He's throwing the ball downfield pretty good. It's in these moments when he just has to lay a ball out to get a first down, to get a few yards, to get out of bounds, where he's thrown that low ball, skipping it in the dirt. And this one, unfortunately, was caught. In these situations, you'd rather just have an incomplete Absolutely. pass. Can't force to burn their last time out. So it's fourth down and three. Call it four. Fourth down and four. That's a short four. Avion Smith. UAB only rushing three. There's the short pass in the first down. Kenny Tracy able to keep his feet that time. And scamper out of bounds. Pick up a 10. And Eric Kohler saw something he liked on the last play. It was open on the last play. Had a bad pass. Come back to it. Let your quarterback stand. If it's part of the play call, that's your first read, it's easier for your quarterback. If it is your third or fourth read, you have to come back to it, harder to get your feet set. First and 10, UAB territory from the 45, Avion Smith taking a deep shot. And that just goes incomplete. Wanted Mac Hippenhammer. Here's your problem in these situations. Your receivers start to get tired. And so you're in a hurry up situation you're throwing the ball downfield, and you can see Hippenhammer with his hands on his hips. Your receivers are now at this stage starting to get gassed. You know how right. the defensive line gets gassed and they can't get to the quarterback? Well, your receivers are also gassed at this point. Second and 10. Avion Smith looking to the left. Heavy traffic area, wow. and he got it to Miles Marshall. That's a tight window. Pick up a 12. Clock continues. 13 seconds. 11 seconds. Here's Smith. Seven seconds, they have no timeouts. Gets out of bounds. And a flag is out. One second on the clock. Wow. Out of bounds at the 31. Personal foul, face mask, number 29, defense. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run, first down. How about this? I don't know that we could have asked for a better first bowl game of the bowl season. One second left. The ball spotted at the 15. Remember, Graham Nicholson missed an extra point earlier. Would have had a chance to kick for the tying field goal. Got to have it play for Avion Smith and Miami. The throw zips it across the middle. It's caught, <laughs> and he stopped at the two-yard line. Jalen Walker makes the catch, and he is stopped short down at the two-yard line. UAB rallying to the football on defense. From the 15, got 13 of the yards. And a dramatic finish to this one. UAB is going to hang on and win this football game 24 to 20. What else can you ask for in the first bowl game of the season? What an amazing finish. Two teams at 6-6 six and six found their way to get bowl eligible and to play a great game. Raynard Ellis, I think, is the player who made the stop. In open space, it is. Raynard Ellis, the fifth-year senior, 
who had a monster last game with 18 tackles, comes up with the tackle of the game to win the game for UAB. If not for him, Walker is definitely scoring, and Miami's definitely winning this football game. What a finish to this one. Down to Chris. Well, we're already drenched. You got the water bath. Take me through that stop right there. It was huge. It was huge. It really comes down to everything this team stands for. We'll fight to the very end. We'll never give in. We're tough. We're rugged. We play for each other, and we never give up. You know, no matter what we've been through this year, it's just the UAB way. You know, we play for Birmingham. We play for each other. We love each other, and we fight to the end, and that's really what we're all about right there. It's been an emotional couple weeks for you as you wrap up your stint as the interim head coach at UAB. What do you want to tell your players right now? I want to tell my players I love them. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of my coaches. I'm proud of everything we've accomplished. And, uh, you know, just proud of them, man. These guys are warriors. They never give up. They never give in. And they stand for our standard, plain and simple. That's the UAB way. I appreciate it, Coach. Congratulations. Go Thank celebrate you. with them. I will. I will. Thank you. What a win. Now, how do you not feel good for interim head coach Brian Vincent coaching his final game for UAB before Trent Dilfer takes over. Today's Capital One player of the game is Jermaine Brown Jr. What a fourth quarter he had. He really did, and, and he had the fumble. And it was great to see this young man get another chance to get the ball in his hands, score the go-ahead touchdown in a drive where they had to convert a fourth and in inches, and that offensive line took over, opened the hole, and Brown took it in the end zone for the win. So many people to thank here in the Bahamas. Our producer, Tim Sullivan, our director, Logan McDonald, Emily Turner, who does everything on this broadcast, gets everything right, and my main man, Laron Cash, in the booth with us, doing a great job. Final score, 24 20 UAB wins in thrilling fashion. You know what? This might have been the best of the eight hometown lenders Bahamas Bulls. Post game can be seen on the ESPN app. There's Matt Barry. Sweet lady Joey Galloway and crew. Thank you. No competition. Actually, I disagree. I'm gonna tweet, I'm gonna tweet you and say that you're wrong somehow, some way. You'll find a way. We argue for five hours a day. Trevor Maddox, Sacho, Matt Barry alongside. Gentlemen, we, we had talked about it at halftime. A little bit of a sleepwalk early on there at the Bahamas. That's as good a finish as you're going to see to a college football game. And you wonder, of course, you get the first down, you're two yards away. But I wonder if there's a way you could have made someone miss and get, get in the end zone. Unfortunately, the ball was behind him, and so you couldn't, couldn't make it in. No, no way. No way, no, right? No. Here it is. <laughs> Here's the play right there. Yeah. Can he get airborne? You think going to the end zone, right? But then it's like, boom, right there. Throwing to the end zone was what to do yeah. instead of throwing it short there. They only rushed three guys, and waiting to throw to the end zone, I think, is the second guess that they'll be doing all year. Was it Kevin Dyson? Yes, it was. It was. Kevin, Kevin Dyson for the Super Bowl. Tennessee Titans. Against the Rams. The Rams. Right? One yard short. Yeah, and that's what came to my mind, as you see right there at the end, that he reached oh. the ball over and get it. But, you know, we talk about it all the time. There's 43 bowl games, 40 of them here on the ESPN Family Networks. They're all going to be fun to watch. I mean, it's a bowl game. It's, it's, it's postseason college football. That was the first one of bowl season. And it seems as if the team started to warm up. You, don't, you never know how a bowl game is going to be. You have an interim head coach. You have a new head coach come in, practices, all those things. Then when the, game, when the game starts going, your blood starts flowing, you want to win the game at the end. And so you start to see guys even play even harder towards the end of those games. Well, yeah, but you talk about the blood flowing. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. They're not thinking now in the second half, hey, we're in the Bahamas. No. How much time do we have before the plane <laughs> leaves, right? Because that, that kind of, what happens That was is, just Galloway that was doing Yeah, that's exactly right. He, he, he was probably halfway to them. Yeah. <laughs> but what, ha what ends up happening yeah. with the blood flowing, is it like from a lineman's perspective, you got a 280-pound guy on the other side of the line that wants to hit you in the mouth and then knock you down, step on you on the way back to the huddle so that he can laugh about it to his girlfriend. That's what's going on. And it doesn't matter where you're playing, if it's a championship game or not. The competitive nature right. of both of those teams came the, out at the end of that game. The football is going to come out. The football is also going to come next. I do want to do a preview of the Cure Bowl real quick because I find this such a fun game between Troy and UTSA. Two of these teams that had remarkable seasons. Give, give the people something to watch. It's going to be a very entertaining game. Watch Frank Harris, quarterback for UTSA. This is one of the best offenses in college football. 
They're number 12 in scoring, number 9 in total offense. They scored 30-plus points in 1,213 games, scored 40 in 7 of their games. So offensively, he's a beast. Got a receiver, Zakari Franklin, who's also a playmaker. Has yeah. some other injuries on the outside, unfortunately, to some really good players. So, And then tight end, Cardenas, he's really good as well. So they got so many players on that offense. Defensively, they got some dominant players as well. And Troy is known for great defense, right? Yeah. Legitimately so. But in the, the Sun Belt Championship game against Coastal Carolina, Gunnar Watson, the Troy quarterback, had 12 completions, over 300 yards passing, almost 19 yards per. All of a sudden, he became John Elway throwing the ball deep down the field. So I, I would look at, at Gunnar Watson as a possible guy to step up and maybe be a counter to him. And that game, you're talking about the Sun Belt against Coast. that game got out of hand quick yep. in favor of Troy. There's been some stuff going on at Coastal Carolina. Troy's 10-win season, UTSA. Time for a prediction now. What do you like in this one? Give it to me. I like UTSA, Meep, Meep. You're going Meep? I'm going Meep, Meep. Not just because of their offense, but there's some guys on that defense. Clifford Chapman at safety. Tall, long, 6'4", playmaker. They got some young guys on the line as well. I think UTSA's defense is going to have to make a play to win this game. I think UTSA is going to win it. Confidence no. high, 43. Troy, wow. playing tough for conference. Troy is going to win this game. You were wrong on the last one. No. Oh, oh, two yards. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> two yards wrong. That doesn't pay at the sports book. See it to half. It doesn't. Wait, what? <laughs>